Alrighty, there we go. We are Woo! public can hear our voices. Awesome. How scary. You know, we're actually running low finally on the uh, EFAP minis to actually release on Moolah. Oh boy. So I still need to sort out whatever that happened. Can't be true. When we had that bungled one, the, my, my RAM going yeah, off. Yeah, right. Have to sort yeah. That out. Post anniversary, probably, which is all. Right. Well, hopefully nothing goes wrong on the anniversary. Well, oh, yeah. I might have put that thought in your head. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, don't worry. That was there well before you mentioned it as a thought. Oh, all right. Okay. Good. Every good. year, I'm always Ooh. like, "Good God, I hope nothing goes wrong." Just you know, even the standard worry of like, "Oh, the internet's down." Just it just is down. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. It's like. Yeah. What is to be done about that? I guess you could use your phone Wi-Fi, but I don't know if that's equipped to handle. No. I guess it is, but still. I don't think so. It struggled with the... Uh, I remember I was using my phone when I was on Real BBC once, just talking to them, and it was, like, mm. you know, scratchy. Yeah, a bit spotty. I mean, that can um, happen when you're just in calls with us. Exactly, Mundo. Uh, and I was thinking, like, is there anybody on Earth who, like, runs two internets at once just in case something like that happens like Maybe. they pay two different service providers yeah a redundancy i'm sure there's some people out there like that i can't imagine there's many though that's a lot that's of a cost lot of, to incur. yeah that yeah, is absolutely. a lot especially because it's like a... you're paying for nothing for most of the time if you're just using one oh 90 exactly. yeah 98 percent of the time you're just paying yeah. for something in fact, you're not in fact i would say that it's downright impossible to justify because what economic loss do you incur from your internet being down versus how much you have to spend i want to both of them down as well then you just fucked you just wasted hundreds of dollars unless is there a way to make it so that you can somehow take advantage of both of them at the same time like um maybe like if you wanted to upload videos on one internet while you uh if that's possible <laughs> maybe. Yeah, maybe um all righty well some some people some people are in, so I'll start describing where I'm at with this video, this 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 gleam of a video. All right, I I foolishly thought that it was in the clear because when I was first making it, I very intelligently, geniusly, if you will, like I'll upload the pieces that are done as I go, and they'll be hit, they'll get checked for copyright, and then I will. Um, at the end, hopefully, have cleared it all by the time it's ready to go, and then it'll just be... And that's where it was at! Six individual pieces, all cleared of copyright. And that made up the whole video, and so then I bound them together, uploaded, and I'm pretty sure on that day, as it was uploading, I felt very like, this is it, I've done it, that's everything, that's everything <laughs> I need to do. Hooray. Um, right. See, you got your hopes up, that was your I first did. mistake. It was so mean. Um... So, like, YouTube was just like, um, oh, yep, we're processing it. And I was like, cool. Then it was like, oh, there you go. Just just the one copyright. There you go, blocked. And I was like, but you didn't block any of the others. And they were all an hour long. It's like they weren't, like, just clips or anything. Like, what, what, why'd you do that? And I check it. And funnily enough, because um, it's no secret what the video is at this point, the sequence that they blocked was when I was trying to show how ridiculous it was The Doctor Strange takes, like, ten years to go from the Waypoint Junction door to the book. And so, it was probably the riskiest part of the video, I will agree. I show three, uh, I think, eight-second clips that are, are broken up by about eight seconds of me talking. I was like, okay, I guess I can see why a bot would be like, hey, you're practically showing the movie. Eh, it's fine, but, you know, the point of that section was to show how fucking annoying it is that they don't seem to care that they should be rushing. If I was to just say that, you know, it's an argument, but it's it's not as effective as showing you guys just how bad that situation is. So fine, you know, it's, 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 I, I was like, fine, I, this is like a week ago, and I was like, I have plenty of time, I can re-edit that one. I even consider it vaguely fair. And then, you know, I, I correct it, and then re-upload it, and it hits me again for a similar place. But this one was separated by like 20 seconds of commentary with different visuals from stuff like fucking Game of Thrones and Doctor Strange 1. And it's just like, how 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 is this happening? And I was like, I guess I'll fix that one. Fine, are we, are we good now? And it was like, nope, there's another problem. Uh, like, another part of your video where you're showing Wanda getting punched in the face, there's a visual right after it that's too close to the actual visual of the actual thing, and so... Nope, that one's down too. And it's just like, uh... Okay, I'll, just, I'll sort that one out. And that's what I've been doing for right up until now, and I realized that I've got about one more render and upload that I can do to be on time. 
and um, let's say it's incredibly doubtful to the point where they're hitting me with copy right now that are like eight second clips of just, or rather, eight second clips, but they're like cheating. It's like six seconds of actual movie and then two seconds of me with something else. And it's like, so that shouldn't count. And the only way to get rid of that is to just like fuck around with the visuals by putting, like there's just going to be random parts of the video that might seem a little strange now, but you'll know that it's mm. just because of copyright. Um, and so the reality is uh, I'm almost out of time to get it out on Friday, which means, uh, you know, I can't do it on Saturday because I'm a little bit busy. And then Sunday I'll be too busy. Um, Monday I'll probably be able to... Because, like, the problem is I can't really render while streaming. Streaming. Yeah. And yeah. I can't upload while tricky. streaming. Yeah. I almost... I was about to say I needed two computers, but I was like, no, that might not even solve it, right? Because it, it's just one connection. My internet's not fantastic here. It's, uh... I don't know if it can handle that, but... Um... So, you know, the reality is that it may take, like, an extra week, but it'll come out, and it is, like... Six hours long, so not the worst thing ever. Um, and you guys, you know, we're still doing the uh, episode 200. And all the things, all the plans are in place. I need to send like a reminder invite to a bunch of people, but yeah, that's the bad news because I was very excited to get it out on uh, on Friday. Is it confirmed as MOM critique? Yes, yes. So, um, I didn't tell him. I told Your him secret a safe map, with me. right? I know. I'm just Ages making sure that ago. was twas not I. Two different PCs and internet providers. That would do it. That would do it. Yeah, no. I mean, if you're, you know, paying that kind of money, like fuck it, go all the way. Get yourself a uh, entirely. It's just a total backup system, a total backup environment. It's <laughs> a backup life, um, and I think that it's worth mentioning. You try and learn as you go on with. Uh, copyright you try and figure out what their game is and that's pretty it's an much ever evolving beast you know it's a it's an active game as it were yeah <laughs> okay sorry breaking news. <laughs> yeah uh -oh. breaking news everyone stay <sighs> tuned so i was on good old real bbc and we were talking about she hulk i had quite a few rants on that episode i don't like she hulk this is not a secret um a lot of people did like She-Hulk, and that's fine. I even, I think, was talking about this in reference to saying it's totally fine to like She-Hulk. Um, but I brought up, and people let me know this, and I actually checked, it is there. Uh, Angry Joe's review of it, he gave it a 7 out of 10. And I was like, wow. Nice. Really? Yep. And you know, some All people right. were like, what, what? And I was like, eh, that's, that's normal. Angry Joe famously said Suicide Squad was really good, The Predator was really good. He gives like, <laughs> ten out of tens to Mandalorian. It's like this is all normal. Yeah, he is. He's very not good at thinking things are good. <laughs> and I said like uh, he seems pretty consistent on good old games, but TV shows less so. I checked his comment section and I said the curiosity there wasn't the fact that people disagreed. That would have just been fine. The curiosity for me was seeing so many top comments saying, "Yeah, well, you're gonna change your fucking mind in an instant when you see all your fans hate it." Like, you don't have a backbone, you'll change your mind in an instant once you see what other, everyone else is saying. And I was just like, ooh, that's a mm. bit, a bit rough. As famously, a lot of uh, people... It's funny, right? Because, like, it's two ends of the spectrum. Do you want to be stubborn, known as stubborn, or known as spineless? I'm not even... I guess, mm. is stubborn better than spineless? I, I would um, rather be known as stubborn than spineless. What do you think, Krangy? Uh, I think that it's important to have conviction, and maybe that's more important, even if it means that... I guess it's like, do you want to be immovable, or, like, just some sludge that you can sweep up with a broom in any direction? <laughs> I think there are some there are some positive traits that I can associate with stubbornness, like, yeah, you could say, yeah. like steadfastness and conviction. Well, because spineless but... means that you're not changing your mind for any legitimate reasons. You're doing it out of mere convenience, which yeah, is, because I you're think, a yeah, I think it's better to be, yeah, I, I think it's better to be stubborn. You'll find in a lot of content, I think some characters will say, you're goddamn right, I'm stubborn. As a, Nobody says, you're goddamn right, I'm spineless. <laughs> <laughs> I love being spineless, it's great, look at me. I'm a not. I slap they, in the wind. <laughs> it's so great. Say, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm spineless. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. That, exactly. Yeah. No, 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 please, please, just don't me, sir, 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 sir. I just, I just want some more ad revenue. <laughs> You're not oh. spineless at all. Oh no, 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 not at all. You're right. 
Yes, you are spineless. Yeah, no, I, I, I know. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Absolutely, one hundred percent. I totally agree. Yeah. But yeah, I think we are agreed on that. So yeah, uh, I would. I think we'd rather that, like the, the audience being upset with you for like being like, "God damn it, you'll never change your opinion," even though the best arguments were given to you, as opposed to, "Who cares what you're saying right now and how wrong it is? You'll flip it tomorrow when you realize what the community's decision is." For things like yeah, Ooh. it's like at least he's sticking with his guns and he's gonna he's defending what he said. That's that's I, yeah, absolutely better to be stubborn mm -hmm. than spineless. I say. So. Um, I, I checked out some of it. One of his quotes was like, "I've seen. I know that some people are getting annoyed that she is basically as good as Hulk in in almost everything, if not better. But really, who the fuck cares? They're, they're made up characters anyway. But he doesn't feel this way whenever it's Superman, though. That's exactly what all of his comment section is saying. It's like, how can the yeah. guy who like gets super hung up on Superman and Supergirls comparison not give a fuck about?" Uh, Hulk well, it's just because it's not a character that he cares about. If it was, if it was Superman or if it was Wonder Woman, he would care. But so because it's Hulk, he cares, right? Especially weird to me because it's like a break glass in case of, you know, like emergency. Like you have to. It's like one of the shittiest fiction arguments people always make. Where it's like, it who cares? It's made well, yeah. up. It's like, it's like what? why are you bringing that out? Yeah. Thank you. That's very. You helpful know what? I didn't know better. that until you said yeah. it. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate well, it. Now that you've let me know, it's not real. I, uh, <laughs> I, I guess actually have an opposite opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, why are yeah. we even giving it ratings? Who cares anymore? It's all not real. Yeah, it's all matters. doesn't matter. And you know what? It doesn't matter that there's another Superman story where he's evil. Who cares? It's all made up. Yeah. Why not. Um, Except there's more reason to argue in favor of that because it's non-canonical to like your main <laughs> timeline. And I think part of what uh, what I found interesting was that uh, he has like a friend on there who's c clearly more so what you could say like in our POV in terms of what like, and I that would then say more so the common POV because I wouldn't say we don't have mm -hmm. a controversial opinion of She-Hulk. I was pretty much the same as most people's from what I'm gathering. Um, uh -huh. and like this guy was like I don't know it was pretty cringy I don't know like a lot of the things were pretty bad and then like Joe was just like oh people are gonna get so angry at like this that and the other but really I'm just I'm ready to see her go on an arc where she's gonna become a more well rounded person like I'm ready to like this girl I was like okay, okay. <laughs> but I kind of hate it <laughs> like, just, just that sort of awkward banter and um, like I said a lot of people were just like oh he's gonna fucking flip he's gonna flip and I've just seen a picture of he's done a stream called people are pissed we didn't hate She-Hulk episode 1 and, and okay. I'm guessing he's probably gonna badly like it's it's just like give it time and especially because the, the trademark of Disney Plus shows is they get worse so very good chance he's probably gonna say She-Hulk sucks eventually Depends on if it gets better, yeah, though. If it did, we can we can skip to let's just skip to the phase where we're we're all you know kind yeah. of on the same boat. He looks really dejected in the in the screenshot I've seen. I'm kind of feel uh, bad for him. Yeah. It's just like, look, man, if that's how you genuinely feel, fuck it, whatever. You've told people how you feel. You can move right along. You don't need to be like, oh, everybody disagrees with me. Okay. Remember when the whole fucking internet disagreed with us on Snyder Cut? Mm-hmm. That's fine. They're fine <laughs> people. They're fine, fine people. Absolutely. And, uh, I don't know, I just... e -fap it right we now. We are correct, though. Snyder I might... Cut is shit. Fuck you. I'll go have a look and see if I can chop it up for some funsies for maybe the anniversary, okay? Anyway, I was telling a wonderful story, and now I've been completely ruined. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, what I've learned from the copyright system. This is something huh. that Gary came up with as a theory while I was talking about it on Real BBC, and I was like, oh, that's probably true. So, why is it that I'm getting dinged for copyright on six hour plus videos, but not on one hour ones? And it's because, like, well, it's got to be a different algorithm then, right? Like, it has to be a more vicious one when it gets to a longer video. Why do they do that? I don't know. But Gary was saying, like, do you think maybe they're giving you the streaming algorithm when it's really long, as opposed to the video algorithm, assuming there's two different ones for that? Because the streaming one would very likely be more vicious, right? Uh, I would assume it's more vicious because you need to stop it while it's happening. Yeah. Um, Which makes me think the yeah. only way around it is to upload those other sections, but with like four hours of black on top of it, just so that I could <laughs> convince it to use it. I, it's like, if that's the truth, use that algorithm on everything I upload, please, so that I can get the answers quickly. It's so fucking yeah, stupid. Yeah, it's hard to later on, but the, it's a shoot first, ask questions later system, so... Um, one tip I've discovered, if anybody's in the same situation as me, is that if you get the video hit with a claim and you chop out, even if it's six hours, if you just chop out the part 
as a response to the trim thing with, with with the mechanic that offers you that, it'll give you a new claim then on top of that. So you get like two claims for videos you're uploading the fresh one instead of one. That's that's uh, th that is the fastest way I have found to be able to use this awful fucking system. Um, yeah, it's um it's a really annoying environment for a creator when you spend this long and bring your rags. It's been a while. You you know yeah. very personally how long it's been. You've seen all the update pictures as I go with that old group chat of the editors trying to get this thing well, to, to be working on it pretty intensely over, especially over the last week to get there, hit the deadline, and it's good to go. It ought to be, but alas, this system is in place that just makes it really difficult. So what can I say? Um... It's delayed. It'll come out as soon as possible. It was supposed to be out Friday. There is still one more chance it will come out Friday. Um, I'm hyper-pessimistic on it coming out then, but we can still hope. Uh, and if it doesn't come out then, it wouldn't be Saturday, it wouldn't be Sunday, probably wouldn't be Monday. I'm not sure I can pull it off Tuesday either. So it'll be Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday of next week, some somewhere around then. Uh, maybe even Saturday, thinking about it. Maybe that would be suitable, because we usually take a, a week's break when we have our anniversary. So I could pop it out on a Saturday mm -hmm. instead. Um, someone said, Mauler understands copyright claims infinitely more than we do. And look where I am, depressed that I can't get my videos out because of copyright. It's like... Well, it's not yeah, even cause... something you should have to deal with in the first place, because it's all fair use and it's all horseshit. Well, this it's, whole song and dance lame. shouldn't even happen. The reason why it's so lame is because the system is in place to prevent copyright violations and you just wish that you could be like, no, but seriously, like, you, this is fine. You know it is. Like, you know that this is. The reason why this clip is here is because we're talking about the clip. Like, that's fine. You know it's fine. It's like, yeah, but the robot, you know, the, the robot doesn't like the it. The robot so. doesn't care. Sorry, buddy. The robot is indifferent. You can't explain it. It just makes it to you want robot. to talk to someone like a human being and say, "Look at this yeah. shit. This is ridiculous." Like, come on, dude, please. Just let me upload my goddamn video. Your robot sucks balls. Funnily enough, someone said, "Well, then why not just upload it in the six parts?" Like the video is not Man. built to be uploaded in the six parts. It's it's choppy as fuck at that. That point. compromises the artistic integrity, man. It's also not what I want to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like yeah. Also, six videos. You know what's funny about that? I actually think if I did that, I would have a, a lot stronger reputation with a lot of my fans. Like, if I uploaded one per week of a six-hour, one-hour pieces, they'd probably be like, whoa, suddenly you've started working a lot more. And I'd be like, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> content. Yeah, if you, if you feed it to them slowly but surely, then they'll be like, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, is, they look back on, like, the Amnesia one, and they're like, you used to upload so much more. And it's like, those are, like, fucking half-an-hour pieces. Mm. That was smaller. <laughs> Man, I guess it would be less susceptible to, oh my god, look at how long this video is. That's, this upset they me. Used to, no, 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 they used to upload the playlists before. They used ah, to be like, look but... at this fucking insane play Instead, now, it's actually easier for them with the time code, I guess, because they just hyper-focus on that. They're like, look at that fucking time, which I'm excited for them to do with this video, but they don't even get to do that now. Or at least they have to wait another week. Those poor yeah, Twitter profiles. Week, poor They're week, waiting to have a viral tweet and they have to like... wait. Terrible, 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 terrible. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's it's 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 frustrating, nightmarish. But how about some good news, huh? How about some, good, some good news? News. We got yeah. the new plushies have launched, or at least Hooray! two of them have. I know a lot of people are curious about what's how's this all working, so we'll, we'll explain it. Got this nice little image on screen. You can see them right here. There are links currently sitting in the description if you want to go ahead and uh, give them a little clickaroony. Um, yes, myself, uh, Rags, and Fringy have a 2.0. Well, I say 2.0. It's, it's the second generation set for EFAP. Second gen, yeah. Uh, however, we 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 have been struck with a staggered release, is what I would refer to it as. Rags is 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 on the way. Will yes. be here. Um. For now, uh, we'll, we'll open with good old Fringster and Mumblo. Uh, as you can see, my second gen version, this little guy, with the, they designed the tentacles a little different, they've done the eyes, um, I think a little, little more of an improvement in terms of making the eyes look a little bit more like their uh, reflective lenses as opposed to uh, what they looked like last time, even though they're much more of a happy, cutesy, wholesome thing. Gone for a mischievous, mischievous look this time. I'm holding a little um, nondescript, non-licensed cookie box, okay? 
not an IP. <laughs> <laughs> it's just cookies. Um, because I like. Whereas mine is the verifiable Patterson Fringy Goo. I was gonna say this. This is uh, your first ever chance to own plushy goo. That's, uh, That's right. And look, That's how, right. look how happy Springy is. Assembly line. I think I'm if you thrilled. detach the goo, your uh, the eyes will start to seem less happy. You know, you don't want to take. I'm not sure that that. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if I can confirm or deny that. But I mean, at the very least, he's quite happy there with his with his goo, and it can mm -hmm. be yours too. And hey, look, you know, you can think of it this way. You can either think of it as getting fringy with the goo, or you get the goo and you get a complimentary fringy to go with it. Yeah, it really depends on like that nice. more valuable, I guess. Yeah, so, we can, uh, yeah, that's true. They're yeah. rare. They're happy is. Look at how cookies. mischievous Moller is. Look at with it. Mm -hmm. And if him. you purchase these two lads together, you get your 10% discount. And uh, that's right. when Rags comes around, we will be uh, launching and promoting him, obviously on EFAP. We will be mm -hmm. providing you a code that gives you 10% off, so look out for that. Um, and then you can have your whole second gen set. Um, mm -hmm. and you water your crops with it. We're not gonna, I guess, we're not gonna say what you should or shouldn't do with goo, right? No, well, they're not it's, saying you if you, you could just because you can do something doesn't if you say that you can do something, that doesn't yeah, mean like that you you're water your saying you should or shouldn't do but it. That's exactly you could do yeah. a lot of things. Yeah. But the goo is um, for you now. It's in your hands. Yeah. The agricultural uses for these plushes, we we make we make no claims. Mm-hmm. But yes, you can find them on Makeship. Yeah, uh, I think they link to each other as well in their little campaign slots. Yes. The more they do. one and a free. Oh, that's good. And um, yeah, mine is it is on the way. Absolutely. I am waiting on uh, them to do some things. And then we'll be all set to go. And it's just honestly, lagging a little behind. Uh, a lot of people were like, where, where is a fringy one? Feels like we're about time. It's like, I think they did a fantastic job on this. I'm, uh, I'm pretty it thrilled, thrilled with it. I'm thrilled. It looks great. Yeah, it looks really good. Absolutely. I feel like I'd buy stuff off him in some kind of fantasy game. <laughs> yeah, you look like a shopkeeper. Yeah. Not one at a store. He just has like a backpack and he wanders around. He's like a wandering. Maybe he has like yeah. a he has an alpaca or something. Um, um, well, it'd be a kangaroo, right? I'd bounce around on a kangaroo and just then it's like, hey, here we are. You, maybe I don't know if, and other if, if you're selling goo in glass bottles, is a bouncy kangaroo oh, the best? You have to. A, that's a, what if it had attached to it some sort of system? You know those things that like balance. So like even if something moves up and down, it remains static. In, like, like the, the camera, in. those really expensive camera. Yeah, uh, yeah. I guess that doesn't fit so well into a fantasy world, but hey. Also, that sounds hella expensive just for the sake of having a kangaroo. Right. Instead of just it would like be good branding or any other. Mm. It, yeah. 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 Some I suppose better. it would be. There's all kinds of you could all kinds of beasts of burden down in Australia that you could come up with. There are with. many. The the problem is that a lot of the larger ones that you could because it's it's mainly kangaroos and emus that are even conceptual and cassowaries, I guess, that are conceptually animals that you can ride at, up top like a horse. Um whereas everything else is way smaller. It's like a Big tiger claw. Work. Like a um, like a Final Fantasy has the chocobo. You could ride on right, that. Right, so it's just an emu that's like a chocobo. Yeah, that's probably your best bet, really, because like I don't could really pull, see. Pull a cart. You could pull a little cart behind him. Um. Yeah, it could. It. Yeah. Yeah, it could. Um. Got whereas I when you show up and you open up the like, doors on the side. It's fantasy. Just have a giant wombat. You know what? A giant wombat sounds like it could work. Yeah. Yeah, a giant wombat. You could. You could do like that. Like Santa Claus. You have. A bunch of smaller like creatures whole, pulling. Whole, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you, you don't have to go with one big one, but yeah, two rows of you know you could have like like a like like a sled almost or a, a, but but they're pulling the wagon like the like in the old west or whatever. You got the wagon and it's pulled by horses or cows or something. But you could have you it, as big as you as many as you want really. If you want to have many many small creatures. Then it is. It now? is kind of funny because you say like like the old west where they had horses. It's like as if Australia didn't have a frontier that also had horses. It's like <laughs> no, nah, it was emus and shit. There were no horses yeah, I in assume Australia. That's what they used, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that and because there are a bunch of camels in Australia too, just running around in the desert. They are an introduced species, obviously. Oh. Um, 
but yeah there are many just camels running around i saw thunder ask you know what's the what's the one we can buy it with the production design i assume that's like the little uh i sketchy think it's print the schematic thing, right? right yeah yeah i um it's just sh sort of show you how it was designed before it became a plushie i think um but yes, this is them, and we, you know, hopefully we can get it funded so you guys can actually get them. Looks mm -hmm. like we're possibly on the way. Uh, we've got oh, 87 on myself and 96 up. on Fringy, so we're almost halfway. Oh, damn. Oh, oh very, very, very good. We'll, um, we'll probably mention Excellent. them a couple times during the old anniversary stream. Uh, Absolutely. Which, by the way, yeah, we're, we're almost there. It's like two days. Man, three days. up. Yeah, three days. I got um, I got open bar, and then Friday that'll be yeah my my it'll have been the last attempt of the video by then. That's gonna be sad when I'm uploading that last one and it says processing <laughs> and I'm just like here it is. Yeah. If it goes clear, that's not even like necessarily it could good. Come later, right? Yeah, because yeah. I might be like, is like, do you want to rush it out now or do you want to risk like you know? Like, I used to like mm. to have like a week's time to just make sure, but none of that here. Uh, no more, you need to buy 200 of your own. I don't know what that's a reference to. I, I have no idea. No one would do that. No, no one, one would be so sad that they'd feel the need to have to do that. Don't it's accept it. People ridiculous. don't want it. People don't want it, you know. Reality. Um, I don't know why you guys wouldn't want these. They're adorable. And I think they're swell. Beautiful and curdly. And I'm sure the rags one is going to be just as swell when it arrives. Oh, yeah. It is looking pretty darn impressive so far. Um... I'm very happy with what I've uh, what I've seen. Uh, was it mentioned what time the anniversary stream is starting on Saturday? 7 p.m. BST, normal EFAP time. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it'll probably and hopefully be... this time I'll actually get eight hours of sleep instead of two. <laughs> I hope so. I'm, I'm hoping to get as much as possible. It's that shit where you like wake up and you're ready to go, but you've got five hours before it starts. It's like better go to sleep for another three if you can. Just. Mm-hmm. Um, and like. Probably not energy drinks, you know. Water, right? Isn't that like the best thing? Water is almost certainly the best thing. I've been listening to an audiobook that talks about how coffee, like, the coffee crash is just your mind catching up with how tired you really are after the temporary boost. Yeah. So I guess like... the only real solution is to keep drinking coffee. Um, yeah. In a, yeah, I, I think the effect gets diminished with time, but still, that's a that's a idea, yeah. If you never Water fall behind, you can keep catching up. That's right. That's Just right. Keep, going. Yeah. keep going. I'm sure that that would do wonders for your heart. <laughs> Just yeah, everyone's like, oh, but you're addicted to... to... You, you can't do drugs. You'll get addicted to it, and then you'll always need it. It's like, well, if I always have it, then there's not a problem, is there? See? We got this right, all figured so you, out. It's easy. You beat your you beat your coffee addiction by just drinking it forever. It's you yeah, just not stopping. Yeah, yeah. It's only an addiction. To your bloodstream. It's cold. Don't worry. Even though I'm sure that would still cause a lot of problems for you. <laughs> Circulatory. We, need, we just need to establish that it's only an addiction if it's like a problem to your life and it's getting in the way of you operating. And if you always have coffee, which you will because they sell it at stores for money, you can always have it as much as you want. Essentially. You don't have to worry about it because you'll always have it. So therefore, it's not an addiction, even though you do physically need it to survive. No one says you're addicted mm. to food or air. <laughs> like, oh, what? You're just going to die if you stop eating food? Oh, I guess it's an addiction. It's better, bad for you. Better. Don't listen to those people. Listen like to us. Listen been, to uh, us. Seems like a nerve might have been uh, pinched here or. No, actually, no. I don't like coffee, really. Yeah, I have to, you have to do a lot to coffee to get it to a state where I will drink it. Sugar and, and milk is a big thing that helps. All kinds of stuff, yeah. Caramel and hundred stuff. I just saw. Hooray! So, if it gets funded, at least 100 people will at that point be made all the happier. Friend. Also no, in chat saying apparently Adam anymore. said the makeshift I'm plushies aren't good because they're too big. What? what? Fuck Adam. <laughs> <laughs> They're not good because they're too big. I didn't even know. Are these like what well, you might even refer to as medium normal. sized, if anything? Yeah. yeah, this is like. Well, a she's normal, got way bigger I than this. I guess I don't. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what normal sized is. My my understanding of scale well, okay, and plushies is really. Yeah, yeah. I, I just don't have that scale set down. But I'm looking at mine up there and. 
And that's a fine size. It is a you know what? These are these are it fine, very suitable size. Yes, for I, so. I got mine. And he said he said they're too big. That's a weird complaint. It's too big. Like what you want it like to would you? <laughs> mm. <laughs> I don't think I'd want them any smaller. I think they're I think I they're wouldn't. just the right size. Yeah, if you were going to ask me if you'd want them to be sized up or sized down, I'd say size them up, go more. Like, I want it to be the... just like a big old bean bag you can just yeah. lay on. What's the aspect you kind of want from them? I, I mean, you could take your, you just want to crawl in that hood or take those tentacles and wrap it around yourself. Yeah. And then say, "Oh, mom, help! It's got me!" Ah, oh, no, I can't believe it. Like it's a like it's a horror movie mm -hmm. where the toys come alive. Like they the should thing. make something like that. That that would catch along. Ah, oh, make it stop! I can't believe it. It's alive. Seriously, ah, it's choking. It, it's not really. Do I guess it wouldn't do anything because it's a really soft cloth plushie. So it probably doesn't have much of a capacity to actually harm you. Be creepy as hell, though. Um, alrighty, well, I guess at this point, probably knock we your drinks over. answer a couple of messages that have come in, some of the older ones done as well. Why not? As the... Oh, the first one's from Doomer, and it says, I find you guilty of copyright violation. Yeah, kinda. The recent one... Alleged. ...was where, you know when Dr. Dumbass says, um, uh, like... We don't. We want you because we wouldn't want an archer with a mohawk and the the bug themed superheroes. Like I just wanted to play that line, and it's it comes to like eleven seconds the sentence. So I chopped it down to like eight, and that's still getting hit with copyright. And I'm just like, what? It's not my fault that he takes so many fucking gaps between every word he says. It takes ages to say the sentence. So frustrating. Because like I'm trying to think of all the options I have. It's like maybe you respond to half of the sentence. And then play the other half, and she's like, why am I forced to do this? This is so ridiculous. Can't you sense that I haven't stolen the whole fucking movie by playing that one sentence? <sighs> you have to... Is it... So is it audio that's more likely to get hit, or video? Audio, definitely. Um, especially it if it's accompanied by video. The, yeah, the Avengers video was audio was the challenge, not video. Yeah, they can be quite generous uh, and chill with... with Sometimes, but you know. and like I said, it's uh, it, it probably means that if I were to stream the video, that yeah, we'd probably get hit with copyright as well because there's some kind of streaming out. This is why I said, like, when we cover videos live on EFAP, that we should be careful because different rules, and we've discovered there are definitely different rules. You remember when um, our stream got blocked covering a fucking Cinema Sins video, and it's like, how is that possible? And it's like, well, because your stream's different, I don't know, mm -hmm. works. Yep, different stream in in di in between different streamers, you will ha they'll have different rules as well because there have been parts of it, I mean that there's a stream element to it, but if you make a video responding to someone else, then you can get hit for just a thing that's in their video as the original thing, not as their video, but as the thing that they're referencing. And it's like, well, that's not fair. How do how do they get away with it, and I don't? It's nonsense, bullshit. Like, why don't you four by three it or? Black and white it or blah blah blah. It's just like, trust me, it's the it's the audio part more. What's weird though is, is there a way to like pitch shift it if you need to? I I did give that a shot. It's so absurd and weird that it's like, uh, it's there. There is a limit for me in terms of like you're damaging my artwork. Yeah, I understand. Fuck. You have to maybe the key is to lean into it and have like a little title card or something that pops up that says like copyright o. Oh, uh, like copyright protecto phone or something like that, I mean, or have like, like a little, little gif of a dancing copyright man or something. I think, <laughs> yeah, because if you did that, I'd be like, oh, it's not your fault. You're trying to. I don't know. Be really funny. Robot. One way around, it, it might be to do what a lot of people do, which is just like, you know, text out what he says and read it out in my own voice, and just say like, uh, so then he says this, and I put it in quotes. And maybe do so, funny voices as well. You know? Not even necessarily that, just so that I get the point across and it's copyright free, there's no risk, you know. But it's like, I didn't think that when I'd done that part that it would be. I had a thought to myself yeah. when I was on my like fucking fifth render that I was like, should I not just go through the whole video and be like really harsh with the potential copyright? And I was like, that wouldn't make a difference. I already did that. That's technically what I do on my first few run throughs. I am harsh with copyright. You'll notice that I'm like, at some points, it's like, man, this, this, you're doing a lot of cuts. And I'm just like, yeah, I know, because 
Sometimes you kind of have to with how annoying everything is. Uh, you know, you can put some other sound on the section that can fix it. That might be a solution if I can find something that's not too distracting. But, um, you know, the video, for, for those who don't know, uh, TFA Part 2 was delayed by, like, forever because of uh, copyright when I was making it. I remember that one very much so, because there's... It's so hard to start working on a new project when you are just constantly re-rendering, refixing, and re-uploading, and sorting out all the, like, tertiary information of a video once per day, or even more than that. When you're like, right, mm -hmm. now time to start my new scripts. Like, mm, it's just uh, this closure slash... Uh, you haven't finished making your things while your tools are still on the table, in a sense. If you're starting to think of it like a carpentry thing. I'll move on to the next thing. You need everything out for the previous thing. Um... Yeah, that one was the worst. I had to re-render it like a bazillion times. This one uh, is annoying, and so it will... It'll get out eventually. It's just that not anywhere near when I would like it to be. And I, maybe that's a reason I should make shorter videos, like one hour long videos, so I don't have to deal with the hyper copyright. I yeah. wouldn't blame you, honestly. It's, it, it, it sucks that it has to be done. And there's, there's ways to try and work around it, but they're all compromises. Uh, we have... I wish there was someone you could just like talk to. Like you get, like you get to a certain size on YouTube, and you get sort of like fast track to, um, like like to talk to someone. Like, oh, this is Mahler. He has hundreds and hundreds of thousands of subscribers. He makes these videos. He gets millions of views. We know him. He's like verified and everything. He put out a video like the reviews he always does. He's good to go. He's fine because they let you. I, maybe that's what's weird. They let you do the whole um, monetization self-checking thing now, but they won't let you do that with copyright. Like, you can't just check a box that says, no, no, seriously, the bot's wrong. Yeah. I have all this. I have reached a certain point on YouTube where I'm allowed this privilege due to, like, my size and view count. Let me put my stuff on the site. And um, I'd be fine with... No, like I can't. I guess it's, it's more so on their end to do this, but just having someone fucking watch it from YouTube and be like, "No, this is copyright free." It's fine. It would be it would be resolved faster, yeah. If someone just watched it, if that poor person from wherever <laughs> that they hired for ten dollars a month is just in his dungeon going through videos, who just gets to on a whim decide if people get to make a living or not. If they just watch the video and click, yeah, this is a thing. That's fine. Because uh, by the way, the other solution to this is to rebuke the claim or you know, counter claim and force them into the next stage, but the thing is they can take so fucking long to respond that Well they just... shortened it, remember? Is it is it is that an action now? Oh you're right. I don't know if it takes place now or if it that's something you need to check. Because now that it's it's only like a week now instead of a month. Well so that's you know Yeah. Yeah. Um I mean it is what it is, but I guess moving forward now that that's either a thing or going to be a thing, it's something that you might just be able to, yeah, I mean, you know. Normally this wouldn't be a problem, um, but like, I, I was very excited to get this out as soon as possible, because it's been a while and it's a huge video. Lots of fun, 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 but it's just like, nope, not allowed. And it's like, oh. I suppose my mistake was saying it was ready before it gets cleared for copyright. That's when I should say it's ready from now. Which can be, you know, whenever. You never know with YouTube. They're kind of twats with that. But anyway, please react to Brown Table's super happy Go Go Sushi Fun Times anime. It's abysmal. Hey. Well, of course it. No, it, <laughs> you just. <sighs> Look, sure. It's. I'm I, glad that he's passionate about something. I'm. Sure, I, I. I think there's an episode out. A second one's on the way. It's gonna be. It's a TV show. All right. Not yeah, you don't want us to watch it thing. one by one. We gotta wait till it's all out, and then we can. We Probably still not. Our, I, 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 I think you know. Oh, no, it's not. People may it's have been. Been. I can see how people make the mistake with all the videos they've seen. They'd be like, "You'd like an anime made by a YouTuber, right?" Maybe no. Really. Uh, uh, oh, you. Um. No, I'm. Uh, good on him for making it. All right, I just. Uh, it's just not. It's just not my thing. Oh uh, yeah, it's probably a lot of work to put into something. Yeah, it's but, very respectable yeah. that he has that level of passion. A shame it's for anime, but you know, good for him. At least it's a new video. We're all happy enough for that. I, uh, I mean, 
there will eventually mm -hmm. be a new video. <laughs> Hopefully. Mm -hmm. uh, six hour Iron Man 3 Unbridled Praise incoming hype. Unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I wouldn't want to take away all hope of that. Muller, I hate you. You turned me into a Destiny fan. I don't know what you mean. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, he's a, he's a fucking meme story. factory, okay? Uh, play a, a crazy factory. Yeah, crazy, plenty of entertaining crazy shit happens when you keep an eye on what a Destiny's up. Would you guys ever do face cam EFAP? Hi, K9. Oh, hi. No. Um, I like the characters. Yeah. I like I, the, yeah. I like them too. It would be... It's one less thing for us to worry about. It's more than one less thing for us to worry about, honestly. It's just, it's way easier on us. And really, it's not about our uh, our actual faces. I mean, this is essentially what we look like anyway, so... Oh, yeah. And I, I find it amusing as well, because, like, when I'm on something like Open Bar or Real BBC, and I'm seeing, like, they, they're uh, having to perform facially the entire... There's no time with their faces. Yeah, and, and I have no and, interest in doing that. And I, I, I just <laughs> realized, like, I don't have to. I can do whatever I want. I can get... Like do things on my you end. You can leave. But, yeah, you can, you can even off. leave, and people wouldn't even necessarily know because you can listen. So you're still. Because that's what I do. Uh, sometimes, not all the time. You'll never know, chat. You'll never know. Up until there was one time I think uh, it was when I was in my old place where I went to go pee quickly, and like the second I left, I even turned on my phone so I was listening to it. Fucking second I like left my room, I think one of you guys asked me a question. I was like, oh for fuck's sake! <laughs> like, what are the odds of that? <laughs> like, oh, I guess he's gone then. It's like, fuck. I gotta pee Go faster. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I don't know. It, it, I'd say, considering we've literally solidified this format for four years, I don't think we're gonna... I don't even know, you know if we all decided, yeah, let's do cams, like, what, what would even... We'd have to figure out a way to... No, I'd have to change, I'd have to, like, change the location of my desk and everything so that the backdrop isn't just... Like everything that's behind me right now. I, was I would want it for, to look nice. How would it look on any oh, okay, thing I mean, itself? There's a lot of things because right now I'm I'm drawing, so like I think it'd look really awkward, <laughs> like if I was just sitting here not looking at the camera, just looking down, drawing, and probably looking pretty stupid while doing it. To be honest, so yeah, I'm happy with the format. It's it's uh yeah, it means that you only need to focus on one aspect, which is vocal. And by the way, the echo is. I've had to rearrange stuff in here, so yeah, I'll sort that out by just putting more shit in this room. Still sound nice and clear. The echo is not like yeah. crazy or anything. Yeah. Which... Well, it's just you need more dampening stuff, so I might put a beanbag chair yeah. back in. That'd yeah. Be I'm trying a new setup and I'm I'm wondering if I'm gonna get really angry or if I'm or if it's gonna settle in and I'll be happy. Really angry being that if I'm unhappy with it, I have to disassemble everything, move everything around and reassemble it. So hopefully. I don't find this aggravating as a format for my desk. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, oh, I just realized I'll read these out. These are from uh, the the EFAP we had where you were unfortunately away, Rags. That I saved these for you. So we got. Yes. Uh, Thank also, you very much. I yeah. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Also, hi, Rags. Oh, hello. Also, hi, dog. Hi there. Hi, Rags of Rock. <laughs> Hello. And hi, Rags. Oh, hi there. And then, a uh, question for you was, Rags, as the resident EFAP's ex... Oh, EFAP's sex have a Pick the best Chad oh song from the Giga Chad playlist. My face so far is why not slowed and reverb. I, I'm sorry, I was... Thank you. Because <laughs> I'm pick, posting it, so I'm not entirely pick sure. the best Chad song from the Giga Chad playlist. My, I guess it, my fave so far is Why Not Slowed. Why, oh, is Why Not Slowed plus Reverb. All right. I respect your decisions. I don't, I don't mind music playing. But I will, but I am picky. If someone is like, yo. We need to have music going on. It, uh, mostly it's just incidental. Like the TV might be on someplace or, you know, something like that. We're not like, oh, it's time for time to put on the, the love making tunes. 
I was oh. like, oh, it's fine. He's like, what's going on in the background? Oh, I don't know. It's some old episode of, I don't know, Law and Order. It's fine. Whatever. It's more noise at this point. We're not we're not listening to it. And if things go really bad, you know, I've got something to listen to, I suppose. Uh, hi, long man and fringy. Also, hi, rags. Hello. Hello. Just ordered my plushies to join the drinker. When is Raggles bringing his back? My plushie will be out in uh, next month, I believe. Well, all right then. Yeah, I can't give you an exact date, but it is in the final stages of that becoming a thing. And uh, it's good that we're doing these sort of adjustments and whatnot. They seemed pretty enthusiastic about the changes that we're doing as well. Um, which is always a good sign. They were they were making a lot of good suggestions about material and things of that nature and some just design elements. It's gonna look really it's good as it is right now, but man, it's gonna be it's gonna be fire. Mm. Not on fire. It is really highly cool flammable. Set Wouldn't want to set it on fire, that's true. This adventure. Yeah. No, that would be bad. Your your plushie is going to be likely much better at being on fire than being used in agriculture. But you should not <laughs> you just shouldn't. Mm -hmm. they're really good the way that they are when they come out of the, the bag those, those nice bags they come in that's true hashtag invertebrate shaming oh hi rags oh we're talking about the oh, spineless hi. thing yeah a little bit well I guess they've got their, they, they may have be spineless but they've got uh, exo, ex, yeah, exoskeletons right for, um, for like ants and stuff Arthropods? Yeah, as far as I know, they do not. They're not vertebrates. Well, yeah, but they're, they're what would constitute, I guess, their skeleton as the external part of them, right? Oh, or my like, like the titan that they have. Oh, well, sorry, you both talked at the same time. <laughs> I said, "What about a jellyfish?" I said something about jellyfish. Oh, I guess they got nothing. Yeah, <laughs> they're just uh, they are so utterly. Spineless. What you're saying is we've lost our entire jellyfish audience at this point. Um, well, what do you mean we've lost them? They could be like, you know what? I disagree with whatever perspective you've espoused, but I'm still interested in your media takes. Maybe your you strong know, suit think... isn't judging the spine density or whatever of animals. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand up for our jellyfish listeners. I think they understand the context of mammals talking about spineless and the That's importance right. they have on our skeletal structure. So well, they're I like, that doesn't apply to us. because we're Jellyfish you know, will be that you're jellyless. You have no jelly. Yeah, in you know? case or you're that you have jelly. soft jelly or that yeah, you have no exactly. sting. You're like, you're stingless. You have no, you've got your no... Your tendrils, you know, they're just... Yeah. yeah. You're just, you're just... Um, jellyfish are really hard to do this with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't want them to be in any way confused it's, it's more metaphorical we're not you know it's fine not to have a absolutely have a i know plenty of people don't. without spines they're fine mm -hmm. fine people but um you know people who never hold a position under any pressure it's like that's not exactly a preferable trait like oh no i i prefer this now Be alone yeah i do a podcast called the wheel snakes maybe i could join you guys on here or you join us one day Maybe. The wheel snakes? I don't even know what a wheel snake is. Maybe that's a thing. Maybe it is. You know, it's an it could be many animal. things. Picturing Maybe it's like a wheels. drug dealer on a motorcycle. Could be. Like all those, those wheel snake. Where do you get? Where do you get that? Um. Where do you get that? What's a drug? It, cocaine. Where do you get that cocaine? It's like, oh, I get it from. I got a wheel snake. He's on Fifth and Main every Tuesday behind the Panera Bread. I get you know, my kinda, cocaine from him. That reminds me of the tunnel snake. You guys remember them guys? Yeah, tunnel snakes rule. Oh yeah, they do. Uh, two questions for the gang. How many EFAP movies have been recorded that haven't been released yet? So I'd say about 20, maybe even 30. Um, there's been a production halt of sorts. It's going to get sorted out. Uh, this was one of the, the getting this video done and, and the anniversary out of the way is going to be two of the bigger things that sort of unclog the system, but um, oh boy uh, it's going to be a difficult like, September's filled with, have you, this is insane, right? We got, I want us to record us watching Andor and make minis out of it I want okay. to do my weekly coverage of House of the Dragon with Gary on Sundays, 
I want to do weekly coverage of She-Hulk with you guys on EFAP alongside whatever coverage we have Regular normally. Coverage, yeah. And then, of course, we have uh, Rings of Power coming out very soon, which is going to be possibly the biggest topic out of the four for the, for the world. Seems like everybody is ready to talk about w Rings of Power. <laughs> like it's this, like, Did you just say Wings of Power? Swings that would be the better show. Uh, TV show, Wings of Power. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord of the Wings, the Wings of Power. <laughs> The wings of power? Oh, man. That would be fucking brilliant. I would rather watch that, for sure. <laughs> when it's like Barbia just, dies and, and wings his arrow and just crying, like, I can't do this, I can't take it no more, man. <laughs> so that would have been the better show, but we didn't. Yeah. <laughs> So we got all of that, and at the same time, a lot of work needs to be done to set everything up for Halloween month, spooky month, because we've got a whole arc prepared for you folks. It's going to be fun mm. on the bun. Can you guys fucking believe it? Like, the, the what they're going to be seeing is the thing we did a year ago, but it was all, that was fun. That's right. Able to see it in That's video right. format. Of that which, was a fun adventure in terms of movies. <laughs> it was, and I'm, uh, I'll be interested to see everyone see it. It's going to be fun on the bun. So yeah, um, the funny thing I'm thinking about is like, yeah, September will be taken up. I um, mm -hmm. can't believe this. Nine, let's say eight weeks now of She-Hulk. Uh, three months yeah, of like Andor. Andor, yeah. I think wing, Wings of wings, wings <laughs> Power is like two, three months as well. Uh, isn't there something else that's coming out too? Oh, no. Well, House of the Dragon? Though. I think... Oh, it has the dragon. That was the Thank other thing. Thank God I don't give a shit about Game of Thrones. Um, Which is and I guess, funny uh, because House of the Dragon is probably yeah. the best of the four. I've heard that the first episode's not terrible. Um, I, I, I'm trying to settle on whether or not I thought it was mid or good. Which is, which oh, is okay. a good place to be. Good place to be. Uh, yeah, that, it ain't that swell. Yeah. What are, are the movies coming out? In, there aren't usually big releases in September, are there? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not even sure. And I guess it's oh Splatoon three's out in like two weeks. That'll be fun. We can talk about that game that none of you have played except me. <laughs> I've played a bit of Splatoon on other people's things. It seems neat. It's uh it 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 doesn't just seem neat. Splatoon is like a really cool game. It's like a, it's it's one of the few new IPs that Nintendo made in a while, and it's downright inspired uh, from a gameplay perspective. It's like a really great core uh, upon which they built something super cool. So I'm looking forward to playing that. Earl Ural. Also, uh, you're up to 130. If we can, I mean, it's probably not wow. the most likely thing ever, but if within the next like hour, you can just, just push it to fund it, that would be fantastic and reassuring for us. Cool. That would be yeah, excellent. That would be, really be cool. incredible. Um, we shall see. People in Chatteroo, if, you, if you're interested, just in case you're only listening, you didn't even know this was happening. But then plushies available. Links in description. Mm -hmm. You grab them together, you get 10% off. 10% discount. Which ain't too bad at all. I picked up uh, picked up mine already. I have me a, a fringy plushie finally. As well as I'll put my, my 1.0 and 2.0 together. I'm sure something will happen. Kind of Voltron, mm -hmm. maybe. Wouldn't that, like, destroy reality and cause an incursion? I would hope not. Incursions are really <laughs> bad. I hope not. It's that, it's better be in the fine print. God, I wonder if they'll ever bring those up again in the... Never. Never. <laughs> I doubt it. They will never, ever bring those up again. Um, what I did notice about House of the Dragon, by the way, is that my, like, I'm gonna need to get much more definitive on my opinion because everyone else is very fiery about this show, and you can tell it's because of Game of Thrones. Like, if this show were just released on its own with no context at all, not even George's books, I think that people would just be like, this is a neat little fantasy show. Have you guys seen this? Like, as opposed to, fuck this show. It's just as bad as all the rest of it was. Fucking, ah, why did they screw up season eight so much? Which, which ends up happening, like, even from me. I've admitted that I, I deviate into talking about season eight all the time when I'm watching even just snippets of House of the Dragon. But it's a very, uh, very bizarre sort of situation. And I was saying, like, you know, there can't really be coverage for an EFAP because Rags and Fringy are literally like, what the fuck are you even talking about? Uh, yeah, I know that there's there's a there's a little person involved, and there's a lot of fucking, mm, yes. uh, which normally problem, interests me. But I just you know I can get that Game without all the. You know. I might have watched it all, 
but then it ended badly, so I don't think I want to watch that show. Yeah, this ain't a Sopranos or The Wire situation. It's a, it's the Lost situation. I, right, where I'll get into something, I will be invested, and I will want to continue, and then my investment will be diminished, except unlike a show like Angel, where there was constant reassurances <laughs> that it would get better again, That's I know thing, that this if, is the to the pits. If season five had been really bad, I don't know that I, I don't know that you end up watching Angel, I don't know, it seems, it may not be as much of a point, because like, yes, season two and three are pretty awesome, but... I don't know if that's but enough. But if it ends badly, you yeah. know, like a bad ending is a really hard sell. Yeah, if they fucked up like all the characters in season five, then I'm pretty sure it would leave the worst. It could even fuck up Buffy. Well, yeah, because the problem is that once you get up to season three, there would be no way that you could convince someone, nah, seriously, just stop. Like, don't bother. <laughs> it's like, yeah. what do you mean? I, I like this show. It's like, no, trust me. It's I like, know, that's no. why I'm telling you to stop. <laughs> The second question was, what are your opinions on M. Night Shyamalan's The Village? You I don't think seen I've that? seen that. I, I know of it, but I've never seen it. I will not, quote-unquote, spoil. Um, because I, wanted, I want like us to do it. That was the first one that people thought was bad, right? Well, it was after Signs. Signs was one of the first ones where people were like, hmm. Because... Thought, yeah, but Signs was more mixed, wasn't it? Whereas That's the what I mean by... I think The Village was liked by some people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. I think you're right. I think I think it, it, I think if we could say signs was like six to four in terms of like to dislike, where the village was probably six to four in terms of dislike to like, um, ah, something right. like that. I don't know. That was my experience of it anyway. But I, I do remember being like, oh no, like he's like reliable. I guess he's not reliable, which is crazy to think now, isn't it? Like you, <laughs> so, I'm not shovel on reliable. It's kind of like the opposite of reliable at this point. But yeah, I want us to do an M Night arc at some point, and we'll go through his whole. Oh, I'm sure thing. that'll be fun. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be very entertaining from start to finish. Hell yeah, I'm sure it'll be entertaining from start to finish. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, hello, Efab crew. Name, name pronounced like Eiffel Tower in brackets. Okay. Uh, do we know oh. what Wolf is up to these days? His absence absence is noticed even 200 Efabs later. Well, he's he's doing his own thing. That's the. Mm -hmm. The whole idea is to be as separated from the internet as possible, which, again, every time we talk about this, I'm just like, it really was not a bad idea. The internet is a foul place. Also yeah, some fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, it is a foul but, place. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ringy has a plushie? Someone to fight the emus. I guess so. Um, I mean, I, I guess, yes, you could. You could give that a try. I'm not sure how effective that strategy would be, but... He's your plushie, you know? Uh, you're just trying to beat Jay's video with this upload, aren't you, Mauler? It's kind of funny that that is <laughs> a reality. Uh, that was not think... intended, though. I know this. I know that that wasn't your goal at first. No, well, it wasn't even close. The original length of this video was under five hours. Um, but then... I mean, I'm just being completely honest here. Like, uh, the, the behind-the-scenes video, which I was made aware of by High Top. He tweeted out about this hour-long behind-the-scenes video for MOM, and I was like, really? Um, oh my god, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I gotta find this thing. And I watched it, and I watched uh, a decent chunk of it with Fringy, and fuck me, the comments in that thing. I don't know why they released yeah. it. They say it all in a very sanitized and positive way, but the shit they are saying, you're like, are you... Why are you admitting to this? Admit they just, this? They just casually admit, yeah, the script was basically written as we were filming, and it was it was a nightmare because I didn't even know what was happening. It's like, why would you? <laughs> like, what, what's? I guess maybe in their minds they thought like, oh, haha, ha. it's it's a really good film though. Like, we think it's really it good, isn't it amazing yeah. that? Yeah. yeah, isn't it amazing that 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 with all this stuff going on, we still were able to make this really awesome movie that you guys really like. I think um, I find that video depressing because you look at all the people whose work was undeniably good, like all the set designs, props and stuff like that. All of these people done a great job in service of a really awful script. Yep. Um, it's a real shame because it's, it just is so often the case with a lot of these projects. Like tons of people worked hard and produced good stuff. But like the thing that binds it together is, is screwed. And I, but I do think you're right, that they probably thought to themselves, like, wouldn't it be funny to talk about how we made this, considering it's really good, but look at this, look at the nature yeah. of... And just like, yeah, Yeah, I mean, okay. I didn't even <laughs> know what to do like... for the second act, or whatever, the third act, whatever he said. 
So it's like you're watching a like a like a TV documentary on like rock stars. Like yeah, before we performed up in Pittsburgh, you know, Johnny actually really hurt himself backstage and we we lost all the music and so we couldn't remember the music cuz it was like a new song and so we had to write it backstage and and like we were scrambling to think of the words and we only had like an hour till the show and we needed to finish the set and da 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 and they think that everyone they they say this thinking everyone really loved that song but it was a shitty song and yeah. they're like oh ha ha ha, ha. Um, <laughs> wasn't that wacky that we had to do that and then everyone's yeah, like kind of oh funny, yeah. They're like, what do we know? That uh, explains uh, everything. You know? explains Man, my damn, yeah. Shit, isn't it? Uh, Squat plushy when also high rags. Hello. Who knows? Maybe one. Also, a couple. I've seen a couple people asking, "What's the new Mola video?" So it's uh, an unbridled video on <laughs> Multiverse of Madness, Doctor Strange. Uh, and it's. Just under six hours. Which, sorry, yeah, that's what I was trying to say. The behind the scenes video, I had to incorporate that. I was like, how can I not mm -hmm. talk about this? And that, like, added an extra half hour or something, and then uh, just touch ups and additions and changes to, to correct mistakes or whatever. And it just ended up being the final length was uh, five hours and 50. Dude. So much work went into that video. God damn. Like, so much work. Which is why, you know. Even with all these copyright delays, better it gets out properly, safely. Yeah, as uh, Mia, Miyamoto says, you know, delayed video. <laughs> Rushed video is forever bad, but a delayed bit. I heard, by the way, that Sakurai has uh, made a YouTube channel where he's going to talk about game design. Sounds cool as fuck. Yeah. Um, they should, man, I, oh man, imagine if like Miyamoto decided to, uh, uh, to make a YouTube channel where he just talked about making Mario games. That would be the coolest thing ever. Um, how many hours do you have on Sam Raimi being overhyped? I do not claim he is overhyped, because I don't even think... Well, maybe I do think he's overhyped, but only in the same way that, you know, someone at his level is always probably going to be overhyped, because he's... Especially with, like, the weird sentiment in the past few years of, like, you know, like, he's a miracle worker to the point of people thinking MOM is good. Just like, oh no. When that sentiment is mostly turned at this point. Um, but my sections on him are mostly like, he couldn't save this film. Okay, I don't uh, see how he could. And he wasn't writing. Okay, he was he mm -hmm. was directing, and that is something that get, that puts influence in the script. But I don't know any. What director could have saved a Michael Waldron script? I don't know because you have to rewrite so much of it that you might as well be the writer. <laughs> you know. I, yeah, I love the like, idea. How can I portray this in a way that can? like fix it you just try and placate him the whole time you're basically like he's like okay so this is the scene where wanda fucking annihilates kills and tortures everyone you're like okay let's do that and you record it all and you go right we're just gonna record a slightly different version you're like what's this and it's like so this is the version where <laughs> wanda actually talks to them about what she's after in terms of the kids and they reason with her and then they explain these other options and then we're gonna and have then... a new villain come in called you know nightmare or whatever to to gonna fuck with her mentally and they're gonna have to go on an adventure and michael's like oh so that's a that's an entirely different film and you're like Yes. Is it? Is it really? <laughs> wow. I, that was, man, huh? Anyway, um, <laughs> moving just, swiftly along. Just every time you do one of his scenes, you just do this completely different scene. He's just like, this is weird. And you're like, not really, no. This is normal. Don't worry nah, about it. Nah, this is pretty normal, Mikey. <laughs> you just you have, just have to gaslight him for a year. <laughs> it's the whole time. And he, and he even in the editing room, you edit up his film, give it to him. You go, this is the one that's definitely coming out. Okay, bye, bye now, bye, 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 say, bye. What if you like secretly shoot all of the footage that's totally different? So he's there on set, and it's like, yeah, we wrapped up. What at one p.m.? Yep, go home, Michael. He goes <laughs> to the cinema, sees this entirely different film. He's just like, what a, what? And then everyone's like, man, you that's that's an awesome movie, Mike. And he's just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, uh, all right. <laughs> As you may have noticed, we don't have a particularly high view of Michael Waldron's writing. You could you could even say it's a low view. You could go, go that far, uh, I think. A low view, you reckon? I'd hmm. say it's a low... I guess that's relative. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, Fringy, you're almost 75% pretty... Uh, pre, pre, I, just, funded. I just clicked on the link. <laughs> very, very yeah. good. Wow. We're almost awesome. there. Awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm on 70%. I'm just behind you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. That's, that's really cool, guys. Absolutely, Fab Chat. Very you guys good. are wonderful. 
Uh, EFAP Thunder movies, Thunder. Tropic Thunder, RRR, and Transformers 1. I think all three of those would be potential, yeah. Mm. Um, a Transformers arc would be interesting to see. Could... Like, the first movie is not great, but, like, <laughs> just to see it deteriorate. You gotta wonder what it scores on, like, a coherency scale, right? Like, how far it Well, get. I think the first one would be okay, but I do remember, like, the second and third one and the fourth one being, like, utterly incoherent. Like, very I don't fundamentally at all incoherent. I remember the others. Just well, like I remember pieces and segments, but I don't know which which one goes to which movie and the um, order that they came out in. It's just all this mushed up sludgy blur. It's like they just got put into the memory blender and then yeah. spat back out. Well, so what I remember about two is that in the first film, that was the first time that the that the Transformers came to Earth, except for Decepticon, because it got there earlier. But then the second one's like, no, they were there when the pyramids. Uh and also uh megatron gets resurrected with a piece of the all spark but when optimus prime dies he needs to be resurrected with an entirely different object that was sealed away by the other primes who had been on earth thousands of years ago it's like wait a minute why 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 is that how that works i damn i can't remember enough of it um it's i just very, know that the very line for when... well it's just yeah i uh... <laughs> I um th that movie was made during the uh the writers guild strike. I remember I distinctly remember and this is so funny to think about cuz I distinctly cuz I have the film on DVD and I remember watching the behind the scenes and it said that they wrote the script in like 6 weeks. That's short for then. How hilarious is it now that it's like yeah, we don't even have the script when we're filming. <laughs> That's way, how I, uh, bad it's gotten. I've been saying I it thought was you were 13 days for Black Widow. It was 11 the quote. Yeah, 11. That's right. Is worse. I thought you were going to make <laughs> a joke about the writer strike. Like, oh, isn't it sure is crazy that all those writers are on strike. Now, unlike now where we have all of the writers who aren't on strike. And that's why everything's so well written now, because the writers aren't on strike, you see. Well, that's kind of nuts, right? Like the quality of the good writers on strike is still better than the current writers. Well, yeah, Breaking that. Bad was written under, uh, partly in the strike, I believe. Oh, boy. I'm not even sure, did that, because South Park made fun of that strike with the Canada on strike episode. I'm not sure if the, did the Writers Guild strike achieve anything for writers in terms of making more money? I don't know. I mean, I want writing to be valued more highly. Can we please just that would be nice. appreciate nice. it? It's an, imp it's an important job, goddammit. I wish I could draw. I got quite the meme in mind for you guys. Maybe you could describe it verbally. Do it <laughs> write, write a book about it, yeah. yeah. Well, not a book, maybe, but like a post. <laughs> God, I wonder how many of your haters will buy these plushies just to do unspeakable things to them. Uh oh And I guess you can do whatever you want with it when you buy it. I don't see how they would be winning at that point in terms of... Uh, <laughs> yeah, thanks. For <laughs> but like, all right. I, I imagine that the, the plushies are designed for happiness. All right, yeah. and I guess in Moller's case, mischievous deeds, mm -hmm. which could just be as simple as making fun of a movie, really. Exactly. <laughs> really showed him. There was a giant wombat, Fascolinus, during the Ice Age. It weighed four hundred and fifty pounds. Hey, yeah, that was uh, that's more than Mega Marsupial. That is. That's, that was a mega marsupial age, but unfortunately they're all gone, which is kind of lame. I would like to... Then again, a lot of the megafauna in a lot of places in the world got wiped out, unfortunately. They were Anything too juicy. Anything with mega in its name generally seems to have not worked out very well. It's just too <laughs> juicy. They were too... They were too, uh, it's too juicy. The prey, they were, they were too... Um, Wait, the prey were too hunt. juicy? Well, no, it's just that uh, the reason why I'm pretty sure a lot of them got wiped out by uh, early humans <laughs> because they got hunted to uh, extinction. Oh, oh, the mega that's creatures what you're were saying. too juicy. And the yes. humans thought they were too juicy. So they, they ate them. Okay. They, they hunted, yeah, because, um, and, and I think it was that they were, because a lot of the smaller animals just breed a lot more, whereas these mega fauna um, couldn't replace their population fast enough to account for the hunting. Because I think that's the case with mammoths, right? Like, it's as opposed to rabbits that breed like crazy. Like, rabbits will never become extinct. Wow, I'm sure they will in the ultimate timeline of existence. But, you know, yeah, compared to giant kangaroos. Uh... 
was watching Catch Up 133 with a discussion on Sanghelios. Would y'all want to create a more fleshed out world, such as the name, cultures, and regions? Um, so Only in the it, it is... that they might be relevant, probably. Yeah, that's kind of the thing. Like, as much as it's kind of a pet peeve for me, th at the end of the day, like, you only have a finite amount of time to be figuring out your story. And if, like, figuring out all of the languages and things on Sang Helios is coming at the expense of, like, working on the core narrative, then I don't think it's worth it. Um, world building is important, but it falls below character and my uh, character and theme, and maybe even plot and uh, my uh, sort of calculus. They, they followed up with saying this could be Sang Helios or your own world. I assume they mean, like, writing, rewriting Sang Helios or writing your own thing. Well, yeah, because I think I'm I'm imagining that this is addressing something I said, which is like, so they're called the Sangheili, their planet is Sanghelios, and their language is Sangheili. It's like, there is no, like, humans are not called Earth, Earthers. I mean, maybe they would be in the future, but I imagine they'd still be called humans because that's the species that we are. Um, there are many languages on Earth. Um, there is no mono language or like mono culture. And on that planet, there are many different countries. But when it comes to a lot of science fiction stories, it's presented a lot more broadly. But but it's kind of a, a problem of logistics. How much detail can you do on like the multifaceted languages and cultures of any different alien race when you've got like 10 of them? They're all brand new. You've got nothing to latch onto. Whereas when you're writing humans, at least you can pull from, um, you know, at least you can pull from all of the uh, ex existing cultures and languages. People are saying Terrans, but I, I imagine that you still call them humans, right? Like, if humans well, I mean, this was, space. This was the fight we had, I think, when this was brought up. I said that, uh, you know, depending on... I said, is this from the Sangheili's point of view or from everyone else's? Because what if someone like Yondu says, you're a Terran from Terra and you speak Terran? Um, i pretty sure... Well, I, I guess it's it, it'd be impossible to say, right? Because whatever languages exist in English are going to differ very much from the way that aliens with mandibles are going to be pronouncing and speaking. Um, and so maybe, yeah, maybe it's a matter of, I guess it would be what, so there is a language called Sangheili. What are the other ones and what are they called? <laughs> you know, like, like would, would, would aliens just call English humanese because it's like one of the prominent languages on earth. And then what do you call all the other ones? Well, really, it could literally be like a form of, Maybe, I don't even know if racism or bigotry, maybe, that just the fact that, let's say, everyone spoke different languages in uh, the MCU universe, and Yondu just, he hears Quill speaking English, and he hears someone else speaking you know, whatever language on Earth, and just sees it all as English, or sees it all as Earth, mm. Earth and... Or right, whatever. like, how do you distinguish between them meaningfully when you're different, you know, when you're d totally unfamiliar with human and languages? Like, you, you know, you could have that moment where you and a French guy and a German guy are all teamed up, and they're like, you all speak... Uh, Terran, you'd all be like, what the fuck? No, what? And it's what like, are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah, and the aliens could be confused. Like, I don't fucking know, whatever. You speak, I don't care about your little differences. You all speak the weird human language. Cthulhu. But again, you, you don't need to deal with these problems for the most part. Like, they're not that important in the grand scheme of things. Well, and there's an irony and too if... in that um, some people, if you don't, if you only allude to it, let's say, uh, you know, like some people with different. Cultures, when, when, they, when they consume this media, they might get confused. Like, if you go, mm -hmm. this is uh, he's Sanghili, this, you know, this is speaking Sanghili, but this one speaks Olade, and this one speaks blah, blah, blah. And then the people who are listening to that, they're like, wait, what does that mean? It's just like, no, it's just it's another language from their planet. That's all. Mm -hmm. but they might think yeah. you're trying to I, tell I, them something more. Like, it's a different species from a different planet. It's like, no, no, no. I, different yeah, but dialect, I guess in that case, you know? it's just prose, you know, be, be more well, yeah, precise yeah. in what you're communicating. Or you just you all, play it off all... as a like a like like you are you are aware of a trope, but you're you but you play it as if you don't and say something like what you don't you think you don't think all aliens speak the same language. Good. Watching EFAP from number one since December, now up through one fifteen. Likely slowed down when oh. I have to also watch newer source media for context. Seen almost nothing released after Falcon the Winter Soldier. Catch you live for two fifty. You missed oh, a lot oh of boy. shit. <laughs> you missed a lot that. of crap if you stopped watching then, so don't feel bad. There's some good stuff, but I, some I mean, the saying, like, bright side is you missed bad stuff too. Should we? Uh, should I watch MOM before the video? And it's like, well, you don't need to. Don't you worry. I'll, that's how it works with us typically, is we try and give you all the context. You don't have to worry about that. Yeah.
Also, it's really, really bad. So sorry, I'd never you recommend don't have it. to. <laughs> yeah, I, yes. <laughs> we do not recommend you watch that. The whole point of the video is to not recommend it. <laughs> Explain that it is <laughs> the worst that, yeah. movie ever made. Um, but yeah, see you then when you fully caught up, presumably. Oh my god, piggybacking on my face cam comment, EFAP 200. Uh, are you saying... Well, you're just excited for EFAP 200? Yeah, cool. <laughs> I'm excited Wait, as yeah. hell. Oh, I'm super hell. excited. I'm ready. Let's do it tomorrow. Um... A couple days later, yeah. All right, we leave the door open for that. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, maybe. We don't... When there is a will, there will always be a big enough mason jar. Guess so. Who's will? Don't want to know. Um, how much need send for super chat read for anniversary? Love you. Well, to like read during round. the anniversary? Um, um, the only anniversary I think that had Super Chats read during it was the first one, and that was right at the end. There's a good chance, but because um, it's going to be jam-packed. So, yeah, like, and there's no yeah we're going to have a lot of guests. That's, there's no amount that you would donate that would get you, like, priority over... Yeah, we don't yeah, tend to do it that way. And then, of course, the way it'll likely work is we... I've, I'm going to... those We have eight hours per stream. That is the expected, but, of course, if one goes to ten, then another will you know, go to six or whatever. Sort of thing, but um, we will the, the amount of stuff we have to cover. I, I was looking through our old stuff, we have so many fucking videos to go through, so many great ones in terms of just like holy shit, they actually Me. said that. Um, yeah, and you know, we're gonna have all kinds of guests on. We're still planning, we want to have a gothic phone session at least once, maybe even a champed up oh, one. Yeah, um, there's That'd just gonna fun. be banter in general, like it's the kind of thing you know how this guy this works, guys. We'll cover like two 20 minute videos, and that'll be the end of the first part already. And that's it. It wasn't just one well, yeah, because remember last year with that Randolph one took like seven hours. <laughs> we got um, her review of Jojo Rabbit is one of the most amazing things. Oh no! Yep, <laughs> he reviewed Jojo Rabbit, and she said some incredible stuff about that movie. Um, oh, I love that movie. I can, can't wait to hear it. The movie's fantastic. It's so the only thing, of course, is just going to be with the guest rotation is going to be crazy random. That we'll try and get the best videos at the best time. But we got some general topic videos as well, like. One's about, like, the state of criticism. We've got another one about, like, what's wrong with Phase 4. We've got another theory, which I find fucking fascinating. Every YouTube video essay is just trying to tell everybody what the ultimate, serious, number one problem with Phase 4 is. And the whole problem is just, it's bad. And no one says the writing is shit. It's amazing how consistently they never mention that it's the writing. <laughs> but that's Isn't that boring, wild? Rags. Too boring. It's gotta be something more it interesting It is too than boring. That. It's gotta be a grand tale. It doesn't make a. It doesn't make for a really good thumbnail, maybe. No, it doesn't. What? The, what? The real that. problem. Actually, well, imagine that. Yeah, like you can't even talk. You know. How do you even make that video? That almost sounds like an April first video where you just like. Um, a lot of people have been talking. Ultimate problem. Today I'm gonna explain it. And you just like you set it up by talking about the all the releases of Phase Four. You talk about why Phase One was good, why Phase Two works, why Phase Three works, and then you finally get and you go. This is really poorly written. All right, thanks. <laughs> like we, See we you did later, it. <laughs> they need to. They Turns need to... out it was the writing all along, like yeah. a Scooby Doo meme. It's like, oh, well, yeah, I guess that would be a problem. Yeah, all right. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's right. Writing is important in a story because it's the story. Uh, meme repository plushie. When can't wait for M O M. Well, it's on the way. As for as for meme plushie, he'll release one. Who knows? Who knows who will release one in future. Plushies are... I'm seeing more of them as time goes on. You got your, your Drinker one, your J one, Quinton one. I think everyone picked up one of them, right? But yeah, your Adam and Sitch did their plushies as well. A metal I hope plushie, they were the right size. I hope they weren't too big. Oh, no, they, they had, like, <laughs> smaller ones. They were, they were, like, these little keychain ones. Oh, fuck that. <laughs> I want something you could just, you know, have in its big... And it sits there on a shelf, and it looks really nice, and you don't have to be like right next to it to be able to appreciate it. I don't know why he likes small things like that. That's strange. Maybe he. Do you guys know what mini brands are? No, no, no. All right, I my sisters and I know my 
brothers, girlfriends in them too, but they're, they're like these little, these little, they're mini brands. They are truly little miniature versions of like Cheetos boxes and cereals and Mentos pack, just like the brands you see everywhere, but they make tiny, tiny little versions of them. And maybe that would be something that he would like. This Adam fellow <laughs> might like mini brands. Well, we can discuss it with him, right? We, I've got him invited. Absolutely, to the old, uh, we can. Get him in. Talk to him about his wrong opinions. Why not? We can absolutely do that. That's always fun. It's, uh, it's always fun. We have a great time. Last time I was on there, I think he said like he has an argument that will just destroy the whole consistency is the most important part of storytelling thing. And I think Sitch was like, no, we're busy with other things, not now. And I was just this thing, like, could you, could you even conceive of, like, one thing that Adam's going to say that would, like, destroy our whole approach on EFAB? It's like, I, I'm doubtful. I, I <laughs> doubt it. enough conversations about it that it would be very surprising if it was something we haven't thought about before. I would have thought, yeah, because we interrogate the hell out of it ourselves, so. Yeah, exactly. Surprising. But hey, nothing's impossible. It's got the Mola 2.0 and Fringy plush. We've been waiting for a plush of Fringy since the first plushies dropped. Fringy is my husband's favorite of EFAP. Oh, Oh boy. Well, now he can have I his own cuddly little Fringy. Yeah, he's That's a right. pretty decent, uh, pretty decent pick. You know which? 82% funded. We are almost there, wow. everybody. Wow. Getting close. <laughs> Getting real close. That Fringy uh, fundination. I, I am on 79%. Trailing a little behind there, but I'm I'm uh, I'm thinking, you know, it's a, maybe 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 it'll be fun. Yo, Morley, you got any specific music things you're partial to, i.e., an instrument, a chord, a type of sound, etc.? This may or may not be used for something. I love me some choir. One of my favorite things. Music. Love choir, me a good choir. Awesome. Yeah, I've found that about myself that. I automatically enjoy the music and the track more when choir is involved. Not just arbitrarily, obviously, um, but uh, man, do I find it can complement the shit out of obviously epic and tragedy. The choir can help immensely, but um, I find I would that not. No, go for it. Uh, just I find that it can it can crop up in all kinds of places and be incredibly satisfying to listen to. Absolutely, I love me some really good vocals and really good harmony choir that sort of thing. I would say a big part of what I like about the Halo music so much is the choirs. Um, goddamn, like they really make that. Um, those strings as well. It's funny. I played saxophone, but I really like strings. Um, it's not that funny. I really. Yeah, it's, I guess it's not funny. Well, I say that, but I <laughs> I really love jazz as well. Big band jazz is so cool. Um, You're not allowed. You got to pick one. I no, I uh, my 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 preferences. Adam hates big, are broad. He hates big bands. He prefers little bands. Yeah. Little oh, true. Bands. Yeah. He like big band too jazz big. is. Um, I remember Super Mario Three D World has a. It kind of almost established what seems to be the genre of Mario music now, which is big band jazz, and I am not opposed to that at all. Mario Kart Eight's got a banger theme, and it's uh, it's just big band. And I, I remember I um. I also kind of discovered through that that um, jazz fusion is a really cool little subgenre. Seems more prominent in Japanese media that you find jazz fusion. It's um, it's a super unique little genre, and it's it's neat. It's like the Cowboy Bebop soundtrack. I think so. Yeah, I think that's it's it's like fusing um fusing traditional jazz instruments with um a little bit more unconventional pairings. Um, yeah, it's neat. Cowboy Bebop. There's um. Lupin is it Lupin third? Lupin like well? the third. Yeah. Absolutely, that's yeah, that's right. That has a. And, uh, you're right, yeah. It's it's really neat. Um, it's a, it's a cool little uh, subgenre. That's got vocals and it's jazz. Uh, yeah. Uh, that that's I don't think it's like the 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 combination. I was talking about this because of Ranger Things. Why did that come up? I was talking about it right, Fringy. I think, I think so. it's like tearing apart uh, symphonic metal. One of what is my component parts that I'm really liking in it? It's like I think it's choir, electric guitar, strings are a big part of it as well. Um, and the vocals are often the vocal. I was thinking I was saying to you is like the vocals often move into choir at, at certain points, just as the the main vocals and stuff. Um, and yeah, I, I think I just think that my assumption is they're probably my favorite sort of 
instruments slash sounds when it comes to music. What would be your favorite instrument, though, you reckon? Hmm. Oof, that is a tough one, actually. If I could only pick I one. Might go... Yeah, let's say, let's say you can only pick one. It could be electric guitar because of uh, and just the insane level of things that one can do with it. But to be fair, that applies to mostly all instruments, I guess. I would say that just based on its sheer versatility, I would have to go with the piano. I think that the piano is like the bass instrument. It's um, it's it's like an instrument that is um, in and of itself, extremely well positioned to be played on its own and feel like a like a whole cohesive. You know, I, I get it's it's um, I think it's hard to describe. Of course, you have solos for all individual uh, instruments that are that are viable. It seems like the piano is the most viable to be on its own. Um, just because it's like kind of unmatched in terms of the number of notes that you can play. Um, I, I, I wouldn't deny. You have to respect the piano. I think everyone does. I, I think the piano is, uh, it's not a, it's not a bass instrument though. Oh, ho! pun fun. <laughs> what about you, Rags? I, uh, obviously, um, if you can only have one instrument, uh, then you're probably going to pick, uh, probably the cowbell. Mm. Cowboy is really <laughs> versatile. It's really good for, you know, hitting, be it with a stick or um, maybe a small stone, potentially a rod of some yeah, sort. Yeah. But, a lot of his tail. Uh, yeah. But if I if I had to pick, obviously, and uh, that's the number one, obviously, but I'd probably pick piano as well. I took piano for a long time. It is extremely versatile. You can have multiple people playing the same piano. That's true. Um, yeah. Which yeah. is something that I would do with my brother years and years ago. We would play, we, we, we had the same teacher, and we would get duets to play. And one of us would take generally the melody upper side, and one of us would take the, you know, all the supporting stuff down below. And you can have four hands on that piano and have like a full friggin' song. Um, but. Yeah, yeah, it's super, super versatile. You have so many keys, so many different. That that it, it's very complex. It is arranged in a way, and we have you know ten fingers, but you also have your pedals, and the pedals will alter the sounds of it as well. The skills. And of course, you've got different types of uh, pianos as well. If you want to include like an organ or um, or a grand piano, keyboard, and like the bass piano class of instrument. Yeah, they're all it's it's and if you had an electronic one, then you could just well, do anything. You got everything, don't you? It, yeah, you know, exactly. Essentially, yeah. It's um, um it's just a it it's one of those things that like, the piano is so great as an instrument and the the way that it's balanced is they're often these massive, huge, unwieldy things if you want the real deal. Um but of course the electronic ones are quite good. Uh, I gotta think go with um, the piano. You gotta go with it. I wanna I want to also, because I think a lot of what we've been saying about the piano is appeals to its utility, but I mean, piano is just like a really great, like a grand piano. Sound. That's oh, just a really nice, it's a really and nice sounding, you know. I mean, no, you no hate to any instrument, really. No, I mean, yeah. obviously, right? they all have their own utility, because of course I love saxophone, obviously. Clarinet's a really cool instrument. Oboe has a lot say, of interesting sound. What would you guys' choices be if you knock out piano? Uh, alto saxophone, but obviously I'm I'm biased <laughs> on that one. Rugs. I don't know. Probably some sort of guitar-like instrument. Uh, be, because if you could, because remember, we're not talking about you just have a single instrument. It's just the only instrument that exists. Well, so you can a... pair them with each other, and guitars how... pair very well with one another. What oh, if we? Uh, they owe themselves to many, many went... different styles. Let's. How about instrument class? If we broke it down, so favorite woodwind okay. instrument. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> how far do we want to take this? Favorite, let's favorite let's woodwind instrument. Wood, wood Probably like an game. oboe, maybe. Yeah. Unconventional um, choice. I, I, just, I have. They think. I think. I just. I really like. I. I don't. Know, I like how they sound. Yeah. Um, so do I. Let me. Let me bring up a whole list because I know I'm good. Woodwind. Well, so woodwind would be clarinet, saxophones, uh, flute is a woodwind as well. Um, Let's see. I got me a big yeah. old picture here of all kinds of shit. Um, and alto sax, obviously, is my choice. 
probably a saxophone or an yeah, i'd probably go with a saxophone or an oboe which saxophone though there is a difference oh your choices are soprano alto uh uh tenor and baritone what about bass they're bass sax wait am i That's no for, i as far as I know, baritone it's soprano. Is, is the bass. Baritone is your uh, is your uh, lowest one. You sure? All right. Well, B. Um, I'm, I'm. Don't do this to me. I'm. I'm very sure. We <laughs> I, have. I'm, you sure now? Oh my God! What are you doing to me? Sopranino, <laughs> soprano, alto, yeah. tenor, What's... baritone, a bass. Ah. I would probably go with, um, hmm, I guess the question is, I, you know what? If we can only have one tenor, go in the middle. I don't have Brian a preference in the, uh, in the woodwind. I'll take him, take any. What I would say is uh, that alto saxophone is typically the one that um, that is like the melody instrument. Though it can also be tenor, uh, can slot into the melody instrument too, if that makes a difference. Um, are we are we carrying on? Or we... Yeah. Uh. Well, I mean, we could keep doing this for a while, I guess. Like, uh, <laughs> we shelve it yeah. for now, and you know, we we'll now. come back every once in a while. We'll talk about the next. Advance, advance for this mm -hmm. one. Uh, these look great. Does the one thousandth customer get a free flask of fringy goo? Well, the the flask is uh comes with it. Yeah, I don't. All, yeah. All... Get one per you know. And better system, a free one at the a thousandth customer. Uh, take your time with the YouTube tisms. A good long is worth the wait. I think so too. And it's just, it's just sad. Everything was, it, it, everyone worked real hard to get everything to be in a particular place, and then YouTube was just the one that fucked up. You know. Uh, oh well. Uh, have you considered taking Fringies and apparently YouTube survival advice and just try dying? Um, I don't feel like that solves the problem of getting the video up. <laughs> it's like, hmm, yeah, you just won't. Dying. Yeah, it it. I mean, it won't get the video up. You just won't care anymore. Yeah. So there's there's a level of a solution there in some respects, but I guess it depends on our definition of solution. Really. Yes. Uh, guess the Simpsons quote of the day, kids. You tried your best and you failed miserably. The lesson is never try. Yeah, I mean, that's, piece on ice. that's Homer. Yeah. When you started if reading you were... that super chat, I thought it was, guess the Simpson quote, and that was the end, and we had to guess which quote was the quote of the day. <laughs> we'll like, oh, that's, I, uh, that's a lot. Least, Springy will just least, go on for hours saying lines. We you talk about uh, the moments in Simpsons that make you tear up, the ending of, uh, of Lisa on Ice is one of those ones. Great. That's a um, real good little I, that's a yeah, like when it plays the montage of all their childhood memories of yeah, all man. you know all the things that they did to help each other. It's like man, oh, you hit me in the feels this like getting God deep damn. on us suddenly. You know? And then and then the the best part is what when you talk about balancing drama and comedy that you have this interpersonal drama between Bart and Lisa that gets resolved and then fucking they just burn down the whole <laughs> they burn down the whole arena. Isn't it? Isn't it? it Abe is, who says let's tear this place down or was it? it yeah, um, sure. I thought it was Wiggum that says, let's tear this place oh, apart. Yeah. And then there's a part where Snake is just like tearing up. He's like, oh, well, gets a crowbar and pulls yeah. the chair off and starts smashing everything. We wanted blood. That's right. Abe said we wanted blood, I think. <laughs> Even uh, Maggie was rooting for, for yeah, the she was, fight. Yeah, Maggie was uh, along for the fight. Yeah. It was, it was Maggie's like, a great character. Trying she, to tell she you. Has a lot it was terrible. Everybody had gone to the point where they just want to see two kids tear each other apart. Awful. We don't want you that. You remember the uh, the Maggie when she goes, I think, wasn't it like the Ayn Rand like, preschool or something? And they take away all of the kids' uh, yeah. uh, pacifiers. And then she just organizes a heist to get them all back. Yeah. I've always really liked the presentation of Maggie as being like surprisingly competent and, uh, and like aware and astute. Oh, man. I remember Lisa on Ice is such a good episode for just the 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 machine gunning jokes thing the um oh the pie right wasn't that the, that was in that episode wasn't it or yes uh 
Yeah. <laughs> oh. That's right, because Bart's like, I'm going to walk forward doing this and just swinging his arms through the air. If you get hit, it's your own fault. And then Lisa just does it with kicking. And downstairs, Homer's like, now, Homer, don't you eat this pie? It's like, all right, pie, I'm going to do this. Nom, nom, nom. And if you get eaten, it's your own fault. And then walks into the the, like uh, the overhead light. thing. Yeah. Home. Yeah. <laughs> this, it was, it's a great fucking genuine moment of him going, ow, ow, and then he goes, ah, oh, the hell with it, just starts oh, eating the pie. <laughs> like, yeah. the, 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 the fun experience of eating the pie outweighs the complaining about the pain, uh, so it's just like, ah, oh, fuck it, yeah. whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I, I, even from the beginning, right, when uh, Bart is drawn outside the house uh, to play, like, with snow, but it turns out it's not snowing, Lisa's, like, pranked him, and he's so he's out there in his pajamas, and Jimbo is like, Nice PJs, Simpson. Did your mommy buy them for you? There's a custom yeah, body's like, who else would yeah. have? <laughs> like, <what's>... Yeah. <laughs> All right, Simpson, you win this round. <laughs> Do you remember um, the episode when Homer gets the trampoline from, from Krusty? <laughs> trampoline. And, it's just like... and then when he goes to buy it's like, I can have this for free. Yeah. It's all yours. <laughs> just looks at him. Uh, and then when he brings it back, he just whips out a shotgun. Yeah. And you just keep right on driving. Like a cursed trampoline. <laughs> I, well, yeah, because everybody's getting it, hurt. I just love his exclamation that he just says, Trampoline, trampoline. Trampoline. <laughs> hey, Rags, you should just, watch some classic Simpsons. You really should. Yeah, I hear you yeah. guys. Uh, I hear you guys like that show quite a bit. You talk about it once or twice. You've Here even memorized there. a few lines. I see. Yeah. We just memorized as well. Isn't that nuts? And it's fun because it's of all the things you can reference, it's probably the one that will most commonly be have been seen or heard by people in chat. I think it's probably got one of the biggest yes. success rates, except like Star Wars, probably. Maybe. I mean, that seems that's probably the most likely success rate, right, for a reference to a piece of media. Other than maybe it's been on for so long, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, would it be hard to get budget VTuber avatars? Does uh, does Discord do that in the form of these circles, or do you have to open up the video squares? You probably would, wouldn't you? I, I'm not against I, the idea I, of eventually I, I, having like a VTuber thing in the little mutually. That could be neat. Thing. That could be cool. Yeah, I'm. I'm very. I I I think a lot of VTubers are they they just look bad, um, but. The idea is appealing. Like my my mind's version of what it could potentially be is very, you know, very optimistic. But maybe, mm. maybe. How unbridled is this rage? Are you a kosher pickle plump on a couch, pompous yet thorough in your rationalization, or are you a raging phallus pummeling the pox-riddled orifices of this miscridge of a film? I guess I think it's mis miscarriage. Either way, I coom. All right, well. Um, Either way, I coom. So this one was actually tough to do in some ways because when I was writing it, I was getting absurdly angry, like to the <laughs> kind that I like to push to later in the video in terms of pacing at the point of Wander and Strange first having a discussion. I was already losing my shit fully. So I was like, this has got to, I've got to tone it down a little bit because I would prefer that I, you know, lose my complete... It, by the time I hit the Illuminati and they all die, that seems to be like a more reasonable place. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah, but um, yeah, I have to, it's such a the video has to go up and down and up and down quite a bit because there is some there high concentrations of stupid at lots of different points. But that conversation, I remember when I was first sort of making it when I was talking to um, some peeps about that section, it was it was actually absurd because it was. Play, you know, play her line and then talk about how stupid it is. Play his response to her line, even with a little bit of her line, so you have context. Shout at that for how stupid it is. And then play her response to his line and play his line again to make sure you understand that her response to his line is fucking nonsense and his response to hers was nonsense as well. And it's, just, and it's like, Jesus Christ, it's been half an hour and you've gone through, like, their one conversation. You're like, yes, it's that terrible. <laughs> Every line yeah. is bad, yeah. Absolutely infuriating. Written by someone who clearly didn't know what they were doing. And that's not even my... Description, okay? That's his. <laughs> I, I'm just quoting him. So yeah, you could say it's quite unbridled. It has uh, it has a unique name, this one. No other unbridled video, I believe, in my entire... Ooh, I don't even know what the name is. Like, I'm on YouTube should ever have this name. I make a thing about it in the video. This, this, I'm saving this description 
Oh, rather this this title, I guess, for this one film. Just for this movie, yeah. That's how special it is. That's the place that it's earned in your heart. Uh, would y'all ever be interested in doing streams of playing D&D &D together? I am less so interested, because I'm not too interested in D&D &D in general. But I figure you guys I'm down interesting. for it, but it's up to... Yeah, it, it's, it's up to everyone, but yeah, I, I would be totally fine with it. I think it'd be... Uh good but of course it is a group endeavor unbridled madness was that bad actually it doesn't really work with the clunkiness right you know <laughs> why does longman have tentacles sorry if it's rude to ask just so i can reach stuff <laughs> is it rude <laughs> why does anything have any traits who knows evolution you know it's 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 uh she bucks real hard, you know? I'm a spooky dude from the Shadow Realm or the Eldritch universe or something. I came from there because uh, I was like, you guys got really shitty movies and I want to talk about why. All right. The other Eldritch creatures are all about, you know, world domination slash existing in a sense that can overlap with all kinds of worlds and causing people's minds to go crazy. I just wanted to talk about the movies. That was, that was my thing. <laughs> this one just says Batwoman. Well, oh, nice. what can be said about Batwoman other than the last time you guys saw Batwoman was in the breaks of the anniversary EFAP? Hey, who knows? Maybe a precedent was set then. Who knows? Is Mola finally going to be actually angry in a video? I miss angry rants from Wolf. I'll take yours. I've, I get actually angry in all my fucking rage videos, hence the name. <laughs> but yes, I do get angry at this one. Um, I even had a couple of recording sessions where I, I was worried I was getting a little too loud that my neighbors might start to wonder <laughs> what the fuck's going on. <laughs> uh, happy Fringy Plushy is unsettling, but I need one anyway. Hello from Florida, man. Unsettling? Oh. Look at him, he's so cute. He just wants to have a little hug. Unsettling. I, I wouldn't go that far. However, 92% funded, by the way. Man. Wow, very nice. Sixteen more to go, and then it's that's it. Sixteen, everybody. Sixteen. Wow. It's got to be sixteen that's people really looking for a plushie right that's now. Really cool. Well, I, I still actually I have to buy mine. So my God, oh, yeah, I get mine. That's at least mine one. Here. At least one. How long have we got before you're gonna have to jump out as well, free? Uh, about thirty minutes. Can we do it in thirty minutes? Let's find out. That that's one swell. every two minutes. Empires of the Undergrowth is on sale now. Hi, Froggo. That, oh, hey. for those who don't know, is the game that I narrate fully. Uh, it's a little ant management game where you bump into creatures of all kinds in the undergrowth and you've got to fucking annihilate them and eat them and convert them into your own brood. Kind of fun. I, did, I, I played it on Twitch once upon a time. And I'll probably play it again someday on YouTube when I have a day free at some point. But uh, yeah, if you ever wanted to have me narrate a video game, that's, uh, that's an option you got. So maybe check out like a Let's Play or something first before you decide if it's for you. It is a very sort of niche genre. You guys ever thought of yourselves wanted to play a ant management game? It's not really something that crosses your mind, is it? But I wake up in cold sweats late at night thinking about ant management colony games mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. I can get my hands on the next one. Was Sim Ants? Sim Ant was like an ant colony management thing, right? Or... Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I didn't play it. I think I did. I, uh, no, wait, no, I didn't play Sim Ant. I think I played, uh, Sim... I mean, I played the one that everybody played, Sim Tower. <laughs> More like Simp Ant. <laughs> Cat is thinking too small when it comes to the host showing their faces. Think bigger. Imagine a stream of them in Africa milking rhinos. Hey, you know. I... Discord's having a tism. I can't hear y'all. Oh, no. I can hear you. Can I... Fringy, what about you? Oh. Bye. Hello? I just... Singapore. Oh. Alright, I can hear yeah. Fringy. <laughs> ah, I can hear you now. Oh, yeah. Drees. Singapore. That was terrifying. I think we're alright. Yeah. Hello? If I enjoyed playing Skyrim... Oh wait, uh, as an answer to the question of us milking rhinos in Africa... Sure, maybe EFAP 1000. Who knows? I wouldn't want to promise anything. Um, if I enjoyed playing Skyrim, what other games would you recommend that are similar? Thanks, and keep up the great content. 
Uh, I don't know. There's not. Skyrim. Yeah, I'm not sure. There's, I mean, there's a lot of mediocre games out there. So there's, it's really a lot of stuff I could probably. If you like Skyrim, what other games like it would you enjoy? Well, probably Oblivion. I personally enjoy Oblivion more than Skyrim myself. I have um, not played either. But I guess go back and play uh, the Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Maybe try the... Part of me wants to say Witcher 3, but I don't even know. Fallout? Uh, Are there the new Bethesda Fallout games similar to like Skyrim? Sort of. Um... They're, I guess they're the post-apocalyptic versions of that kind of game. So you could play, you you could go back and play the old ones like uh, Fallout Three and New Vegas, and you could play Fallout Four. Um, but yeah, I I guess maybe. Mm. Yeah, I can't help you. I'm t- yeah, Skyrim's sort of in its own little. Because I'm trying to think gameplay like Skyrim, but also a more open worldy sort of feel to it. Um, I don't. I'm, I'm sure there's examples. Um, let me. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you would like cyberpunk. Uh oh, you might like Assassin's. Some of the Assassin's Creed games, like Origin and stuff. Origins and stuff. Those are sort of um, like open world, old timey exploration, lots of things to do and see sorts of games. Uh, that might be an option for you. I guess. I guess what it would help to know what you like about them in particular, because mm-hmm. I got to go off some generalities. Yeah. But that that might help. Maybe you'll like the Borderlands games. Uh, sort of build a character, get your weapons. Maybe that would uh maybe that would work. Not exactly certain what else comes to mind. Um Yeah. Maybe chat can give you some uh, suggestions. Yeah, I'd say so, because I, I when you say like games that are similar to Skyrim, I'm I'm blanking pretty much. I'm just like because uh, I'm familiar with Skyrim, I just never played it. This might sound weird, but Dying Light might be a, a game you should check out. It's not, it, it's sort of open world, uh, a big focus on melee combat. Uh, you unlock all, all these neat little abilities to kill all the zombies and stuff. Um, I've had a lot of fun with it. I've enjoyed it quite a bit. I would, um, I would recommend maybe you try Dying Light. It's super cheap, probably. And they still, as far as I know, they, they still, it's got a shit load of um, stuff they've done for it over the years. Uh, I can't speak as to uh, the second one, Dying Light 2. And Oh, Far Cry. I bet you'd like some of the Far Cry games. Um, you, yeah, open world exploring combat. Skyrim with guns. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I, I, I forget that. Yeah. yeah. Well, that game is 10 years old. Uh, yeah, we like... have Far Cry. I, I'd recommend... I mean, they're all probably fine. Like, 3, 4, and 5 are all... Totally fine games. Yeah, um, I, can't, I can't speak for six. Didn't never play that. I one. haven't played six. No one's played six. It feels Nobody like that's really. it came and yeah. went. It came and went. All right. Uh, I'm in China. If I don't have a 48 hour COVID test, I'm going to be homeless in no time. Help me. Oh, Ni Hao rags. Oh, uh, Ni Hao. Uh, I learned that from Kai Lan. But. Yeah, get a test then. I don't want you to be homeless. Right. Get a test. Get no, a what test. What's going on there? If if you got to do it to not be homeless, then you probably do it, man. I, I guess that's what you got to do. The internet is like the hunter's dream in Bloodborne. I mean, that place is like the nicest area in Bloodborne. <laughs> I don't know. I guess it does become on fire at one point, so I don't know. Uh, do you think House of the Dragon will follow the book? It would mean showing the women being horrible and reinforcing that the patriarchy would have been preferable. This is what Gary's very curious about with where they're going to go with this storyline. I don't know exactly what they're going to do, how loyal they will be to the source, but I'll be there to check out whatever they decide to do. 
so I think they'll probably try to progressivize the fuck out of it as far as they could possibly push and get away with, and then a little bit further. But who knows? We'll see. Um, also, Fringy, you are three away. London. Man. <gasps> three more. Three We're almost fringos. there. Two more. Two <gasps> more. Two more. <gasps> Update. Dun 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 dun. Ninety nine percent funded. Ah. Wow. Um, have you guys ever thought about a fan fat bringing fans through the Discord to talk to you guys for about two minutes? You guys changed my perspective on media. Hi, Rags. Hello. We have thought about it. I think the issue, it it's not that we don't, please understand, it's not that we don't, like, want to, like, interact with y'all back and forth. I like that concept. It's just, how are we going to do that in an orderly and fairish sort of way? There's so many variables um, to we already, for, too. Yeah, and consider that we do read every single super chat that we get, regardless of size. Um, and we, I like to think, engage with them very thoroughly, far more than, far more than any, uh, any person typically probably would. We, we're not normal in that regard. So, I don't know, it's, it's a concept. I think we just have to think about how we would go about doing that, because the idea of it is totally... Fine with me. I'd, I'd like to do it in a way. I just don't know what that way is. Yeah, it's um, maybe like setting up mods on the Discord to do a form of vetting where they can uh, figure out, you know, like just ask a few basic questions. Basically, one of the things would be mic quality is what I'm worried about. Um, you don't want someone coming and going like, <laughs> and you're just like mm -hmm. um, you know, no. Not that you, you, you're trying to annoy us, I just mean like you want, you want to try and get clean microphones, uh, straightforward question, funnel conversation, and next thing. Um, so it's just a, it's a weird and complicated thing to set up, but not necessarily impossible. Has been four years, so maybe. Also, yeah, 199, 99%. And yours is only uh, nine away. Oh, done. Is it 201 done? soul wow. suffering you? Hell Thank yeah! You. Excellent yes, work. Thanks. Very that's, good. That's that's, really that's, cool. that's awesome. I, I super duper appreciate it. Thank you. That does really just cool. to be clear, I guess if if someone hadn't said it, like this really really helps the three of us out. Like this Absolutely. is actually a really big deal for us. This is kind of amazing. Yeah, and the fact that rallied to buy it so quickly is uh that's awesome. I was gonna say the the cool thing about this is it's guaranteed now. The people who've bought these again, it's them. guaranteed. Yeah, you're you're getting your fring fringy plush. But of course, as you can see, there's still many, many days and many opportunities. And I guess next thing we should, hopefully, Moolah's crosses over into the old fully funded in the next, what, 10 minutes, <laughs> 15 minutes. Seven more. Cool. We might just be able to pull it off. Who knows? But yeah. Just, so. yeah. Congrats thank you, guys. Your course, really and thank you, everybody, it. for the support. I, I genuinely do think it's going to make for a great little plushie. I'm looking forward to getting mine. I mean, they look, yeah, they I'm, look I'm pretty super. darn good. Mollers is as really creepy as ever, it. and Fringy's is really, really nice. Do you put the wicks of Studio Ghibli and Heo Mi... How do you pronounce it again? I know Miyazaki, but... A-I... Heo? H-A-Y-A-O? Either are you familiar or no? I can't help you out. Hayao? <laughs> Hayao? Hayao Miyazaki, Hayao? maybe. Into the category of poorly made media, examples being Spirited Away, Princess Mononoke, Howl's Moving Castle. Why would I put those in poorly made? I hear only good things about those movies. Recently rewatched Spirited Literally Away. Literally only Fringy, good things. Actually. Um, I quite love it. Um, I absolutely adore the kind of... The way they animate it makes food and walking around and just the way they portray sort of the buildings and the environments and stuff it's so uh i'm trying to find a better maybe immersive is the word i'm looking for it feels so uh unique and sort of um tempting to to grab at and enjoy um i quite love spirited away how good spirited away is is a different conversation i'd, I'd have to really go through it all i quite um, enjoyed it I'd have to rewatch uh, Howl's Moving Castle to have more to say on it, and I, I don't think I ever watched Princess Mononoke. Uh, I, I meant to. That but... is the only one that I've seen of those. What did you think at the time? Do you remember? I liked it, but it was a long time ago that I saw it. Fair enough. Yeah, I, uh, I would have to give him a real close look to see, but uh, yeah, just you know, basic first viewing, I, I quite loved uh, Spirited Away. Can I eat the fringy plush? 
Um, I don't think it's edible. <laughs> it's certainly not recommended. No. Exactly what would happen. Fluffy stuff. So I am two away from being funded. Oh my god. Yes, I saw. Very Ooh. close. Mauler and friends, shall you reveal the title of your MOM video? Uh, well, it's called Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness and Unbridled and, and a word that I think summarizes. Surprise. Yeah, I don't Ooh, even know. Yeah, There's no real surprise. reason to keep that a surprise, but I guess it is. We'll find out soon enough. Hope Chancellor Susan can cut you some slack. I'll wait to see it. It'll get out eventually. She can't stop it forever. It'll. Uh, I, I, the crazy fucking rules have a limit. They do give up eventually. They're eventually like, fine. So, we'll get there. Uh... <laughs> what are the names of the studios that created The Lies of P, which is a game I'm very interested in, by the way. It's called Nor. No. N-O-U-G-H, for realsies. I think Fringy's not <laughs> listening, otherwise he would have said something by now. Sorry, what were you saying? <laughs> one of the one of the companies that created The Lies of P, which is a game I'm very, very interested in. It looks like it's inspired by Bloodborne quite a bit. Um, one of the, one of those studios is called Nor. <laughs> okay. Which, in a way, people feel like maybe maybe you have to go and look at it now. You, you're kind of obligated, you know. Also, I am funded. Oh my god. Excellent. Hooray, Bingo. excellent. Both of them. That's very good. So, uh, yeah, and I think it even that says... Seems very reassuring for me. It'll be estimated to ship around December 9th, so you'll get them more than ready for Christmas. Rimbonious. Like, like uh, Rags's might even make it, too. It depends on when, uh, when it's out, but... Hey, dude, yours is up as to As far as I know, memory. it should be... It should be yeah. right on your heels, based on what I've seen, because once... Yeah. As far as I know, once they're... Like done with his stuff, it'll be ready. And yeah, so I mean, I'm I'm watching my emails like a hawk to make sure that once they you know note me with stuff, yeah. I'm on it. Um, will Tonald or Wolf be in the anniversary stream? So, uh, no, de definite no on on both of those. But like, uh, people keep asking, and I'll just remind you, like, so Wolf is out. He he came for the hundred one just as a sort of a celebration that the show got to that level. I think he said the only way he would come back at this point would be episode 1000. So that'll be... How many years is that? 16? 16 years? If me, Rags, and Fringy are still alive and kicking and excited for the next new Marvel yeah, product to talk about... 16 years. Hey, I'm just saying, maybe the whole the aliens invade, I don't know. <laughs> like something could go wrong, I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, I think he said like episode 1000 would be something he may have a... But, you know... I mean, we'll get there. I mean, it's going to happen. There will be an episode 1000. Guaranteed. Unless I would bet money on did it. did something. Um, as a gay Catholic conservative, Marvel wants me as a fan but rejects the other parts. I am glad to be accepted here. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> Plenty of gay Catholic conservatives are welcome to join the join EFAP. Uh, so we can put up with, uh, with anything that we come up with. We we like to talk about the nerd shit. You can throw some mm. gay in if you really want it. Throw on that gay. Usually, if you like choir, give a black metal band called Dimu Borgir a try. They have a symphony and a choir with them. Amazing. I'm actually um pretty stacked up on like bands I've got to check out. Uh, I still got to look more of Power Wolf's um photography. I've I'm really bad with getting through music. Because uh, it's just finding the right times. And not only that, but sometimes with a track, I can listen to it once and be like, eh. And then if I listen to it a couple of times, I'm like, oh, actually, no, I love this. It, it, it's, it's do, you, um, would, do you listen to music while you do work? If I can, yes. But s the problem here, like, I'll give you an example. I often listen to game and movie soundtracks. I think you're My always. Way, but often, you know, albums as well. Like, um... I could throw on ones that while I'm while I'm doing really boring sort of editing parts, but at the same time I kind of that's not a way I can do new music because I am only half yeah. listening. Um, I need to focus on new music to see if it's something I'm enjoying or not. So it's like it has to be given its own time, and it's like a um, it's a tear up from books where I basically never give time to books. And it's like why? And it's like I just every single opportunity I'm I think that there's going to be. I'm usually there's something else I've got to do or something that takes higher priority. It's like 
I got loads of. You movies. can't really multitask with a book. That's True. dedicated time, but that's kind yeah, of the reason it's... why I want to make it more of a thing. Um, I used to like over the last couple of years, I had much more. I got much more reading done, but this year it's it's really lagged, and I want to sort that out because. I've learned a lot of interesting things from reading some books on topics that I'm not very well versed in, as well as reading them stories. It's, I think it's a good habit. Like, it seems like reading is good for you in terms of building certain neural pathways that don't get yeah. built by other activities. Um, but yeah, I think it's um, compared to like just watching YouTube videos, that's like the easiest thing to justify. Movies are a little bit lower because it's like, well, you want to pay attention to movies and TV shows. Um, Video well, games are kind of the same, depending on which game it is. I've got that that interesting thing of um, second monitor, first monitor sort of aspect with a lot of TV mm -hmm. shows. I can yeah. I can do so many things while the TV show is running, and I can listen to the dialogue and be like, yeah, I, you know, if if the thing is great, I'd be staring at it. But if it's something that I'm waiting, I've said this about House of the Dragon. It's got to earn my respect after what happened with Game of Thrones, and that might even be unfair because <laughs> it's like a different team. And I'm just like, yeah, well, you're using the IP, so expect exactly. It. Not to mention the fucking yeah, show it's... opens. You wanted the baggage. The show opens with saying Daenerys Targaryen won't be born for another 170 years. It's like. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, so what? she's coming, is what you're saying. You're this saying is... that she's co she's on her way. It's... Like, oh, okay. Oh. It's the show's way of trying to help you understand where it is in the timeline, but at the same time, it has uh, this. There's a speech at the end Just of the first episode. Just by speaking her name. Yeah, but there's a speech at the end of the first episode where it's like someone uh, has foreseen a time in the future where a great winter will come, and that the the Seven Kingdoms will have to unite under a blah, blah, blah. basically just describing the finale of Game of Thrones, and it's just up get on with your own story stop referencing game of thrones that was a nightmare and you know if it didn't reference it at all i'd probably still have the position of you've got to earn my interest back because i'm i i have openly said i am biased against the show at least to start but um it wouldn't take much to earn me to be going back to neutral and then maybe even positive if they have a couple good episodes in a row we shall see I if, guess it's, it's good to at least be aware of that bias though yeah i've told people openly that's just that's the way it's going for me right now and i'm I'm hyper aware of it, and as far as I'm concerned, it's fine. Um, I'm not. I'm trying to avoid. I've even said to people, I'm waiting until the whole season's over before I recommend. I wouldn't necessarily like She-Hulk. I don't need to see any more of it to know I'm not recommending that. Fucking stay away. <laughs> what if it comes? It just changes completely. Like it, it uh, comes back from the brink. Episode two is just. It was a nightmare that, today, that Bruce right. had. Oh, is it today? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. Fucking great. A few hours from now, I think. Yeah. Well, you'll you'll probably get our perspective on that on maybe open bar actually, at least from me. But uh, for us, it'll yeah. be on the anniversary. We'll try and weave it in a bit, maybe. Uh, yep. Um, but yeah, if so, for those listening, if you want to know my more detailed thoughts, uh, I'm doing reviews on Gary's channel every week with for, for House of the Dragon with him. It just um, it wouldn't really make much sense to do it on EFA. I may be a basic bitch, but I love piano and classic orchestra combos. Rare, but gold. Jazz and swing are a close second. Good luck with the video, Mublish. And hi, Fringled and Ragu. Love y'all. Yo. Hello, hello. Piano and classic orchestra combos. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's solid, fucking reliable, excellent. Uh, one twatter claimed he could make Muller break down in a puddle of piss if he asked him four questions. I asked him to give me those questions, nice. and I could guarantee Muller would answer them. One week and no questions. Shame. Ah, well, uh, that's a shame. I was really looking forward to those questions. I can't wait to see Muller cry. What I find so fascinating about stuff like that is, like, what I'm envisioning is that they would be like, how did you apply the standard? Where'd you get the standard from? And I'm gonna say, in the way that we categorize storytelling, it's, it's category humans have come up with to talk about a thing that exists and we've said these are the parameters these are requirements and so embedded in the category is things that it has to be in order to be categorized as such that seems to be the absolutely most core way of deriving a, a standard and it seems to work really well i feel like we've had a huge success rate right, with categorizing uh, coherency of storytelling i think it's been really really helpful too and um whenever you get disconnections between the assessment of coherency with how you felt about a thing that's when the conversation can even develop to even more interesting levels like why did that happen what was uh what was the thing that got you to uh, not i don't know uh, register a lot of the incoherency or vice versa you didn't register the coherency like, 
what 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 does it? We can talk about things uh, making you feel bored or certain uh, aspects appealing to you personally. You know, all this different things. It makes for really good conversation. I think it makes it clearer. And I think we've had four years of very very straightforward conversations between even just the three of us, uh, but with plenty more people as well. And so if they said like. That standard is still subjective. Baha, fall into your puddle of piss. I just feel like, I'm all right. <laughs> I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. <laughs> the, uh, the alternative, though, that I find amusing is the same people who say it's all subjective, leave it alone, are the same people who would happily try and push for a viral tweet of, like, somebody said Batman and Robin is better than yeah. the Dark Knight. What the fuck is wrong with them? And it's like, well, aren't they allowed to do that? <laughs> Like, well, the reality is that everybody defaults to the standard because it's kind of hard to judge anything other than by how internally consistent it is. I come across this all the time where, like, they will say there is no way of saying one is better than the other, but then they'll just casually be like, but, but we do will. know. Yeah. We, we know that, you know, we know that that's better than that. We know yeah, that. Yeah, we know that. I mean, yeah. So what, what are you appealing to? <laughs> what is your standard? It's very confusing. Uh, a while ago, you floated the idea of editing on stream like YMS. Would you still consider doing that? I think it would be cool. There is an idea I have in relation to that. Give me a bit more time. I've said, like, for a while, and I still think it's true, that we're all still in the early stages of what will likely be the overall journey of not only EFAP, but all of us individually as YouTubers. This is still stage one, early on. Lots of things are still to come. Lots of ideas and projects and all kinds of things. Um... So exciting additional projects and changes. Who knows what'll happen? Um, Digimon of the day is Terriamon. Terriermon? Is it like a doggo? Oh, it's... Oh, this guy... What do with this? Do it all. Oh, look at him. They tickle it. Yeah, I have seen this one. This seems like Happy Meal material. Yeah. It doesn't ring not to eat it. I mean, like as the toy in the Happy Meal, not not the meat of the. I think they use meat at McDonald's. <laughs> something. Who knows at this point? What kind of magical material. Legitimately not sure what's in the meat of a McDonald's thing. Um, but yeah, he's cute. I like. It. Out of all the Digimon we've yeah. seen, this one's preferable. Uh. Up, up, up. I've obtained your plushies. I'm glad you made this unbridled rage. MOM made me so angry I almost tried my hand at writing a critique, but I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh, dude. Just still go for it, man. Get it out on a page. Look over it. I think, uh, Fringy, you've said this on streams before, but I would concur. The first draft can often be this just a mess. It can be a real mess. And then go back through and it's really helpful because it's like you're having someone bounce ideas that are solid but unrefined. And you can then use your fresh brain to re, -re, -re find them. So yeah. Um, and when you get to like second and third drafts, you start to be like, hey, I think, I think this is pretty good. Um, however, you are deciding not to do that. Don't you worry. Six hours of, um, of just annihilating that film. And when, uh, when Reed stretches his hand out, I remember, I think that's where I decided, all right, I'm going <laughs> to... Uh, I think I edited it so that the fucking video breaks. Uh, it's just too much. I'm excited for you all to see it, but again, which I ain't gonna rush it out in any way, shape, or form. We're just gonna let YouTube decide when it's allowed out. Fingers Hopefully, cross, it just stays out. More man, I, I hope you play. Oh, what was that? I was just gonna use this interlude to say I must depart now. Very well. We've ah, only got a couple gotcha. of super chats left. We should, we'll probably wrap up then. Um, but before again, thanks everybody for uh supporting the plush campaign i super duper appreciate it yeah that's really yeah. amazing absolutely very cool that we managed to get that fully funded in like less than four hours of it going live but of course remember it's still active for like another three weeks just do it plenty of time yeah if you're on the Rent fence up, about it you yeah. and usually plush time to think about it mm -hmm. yeah um, thank you guys so much Catch you around, Fringy. Yeah, see you later, everybody. Bye bye. Bye. Bye, Fringy. Alrighty. Uh, but yeah, Mole Man, I hope you play some Halo someday. There is a plan to do so. I want to go through the campaigns likely with, uh, with Rags and Fringy um, and Metal, probably. 
I mean, the ones that aren't full player, though, we'll have to figure something out. It's the first, yeah, three, I think, or the first two. Mm -hmm. uh, Supercuts Delight covers Game of Thrones content. Get him on? Maybe, maybe. Uh, maybe. Bit, bit, everything's a bit hectic right now. I'm trying to figure out if we're going to be able to get Rakeith on for She-Hulk coverage. Try and make that work. Um, I mixed up Hunter's Dream and the Nightmare. Ah, that makes sense. I understand. Two questions. One, what's a movie with good writing bogged down by other bad elements of filmmaking? That's question one. Um, it's not often you see a film with a strong script and like bad actors and bad camera work. That stuff seems to be a lot more easier it's to do. Possible. Or it's more reliable to do. Yeah, because like the worst of camera work is usually still fine. But if you can't handle doing camera work enough to like just get a person on there's no fucking way you're good at writing a script, right? Like that seems pretty unlikely. Um Yeah. I'm not sure if we have an example of something that had a great script but it was ruined by other things. There probably is something out there though. And it's probably more so because of meta information that everyone's aware of. Like um a, a movie getting butchered in I know that people can feel that way about Solo and um, I think Fan Four Stick. People, the original Fan Four Stick was probably a lot more coherent, but they wanted to change it all up. Um, Suicide Squad, perhaps as well. Probably not though. I don't know. I think Best of the Worst has covered a couple. I'm not sure they've ever covered something where they said like, "Oh man, this script is amazing." Could be about the, you know, camera. Uh, yeah, it's one of those like you know. The script is the hard part, not to say that the other things are easy, you know, but if you have a good script, then you could kind of rely on the other things to fall into place for the most part. Because how many, how many films really do you watch and you go, gosh, the camera work on that was really bad. It's just, yeah, it doesn't come up very often, but uh, you know what, if it ever does, we should probably note it, because that, that would be one for the... Uh, yeah, because nothing, nothing's coming to my mind. Maybe, Question yeah, two. maybe there is, but I don't know. Question two is, what is everyone's favorite rom-com? I am... Um, I like Love Actually, so that'll definitely count. I don't watch many romantic comedies, and of the ones I've seen, I've always felt neither. they're pretty generic and fine at best. So... Rom-com... I have to sift through my mind the ones that I've seen, and I don't feel like that's a big list anyway, and they uh -huh. just faded into the obscurity of memory. I liked Enchanted, someone mentioned that, yeah, that was kind of fun. Um, I generally can't think of a single one. Does Alien count? I, I Enchanted, don't, I don't that so. was the, uh, that's the Rapunzel one, right? Yeah, it, well, it, Enchanted is the one with, isn't it like Amy Adams goes into the world, the real world? Oh, the live action one. Yeah, yeah. Oh. If what? Shrek counts, that's like number of... one. Oh, Shrek, yes. Shrek is a rom-com. It's it, it starts out as the story of an ogre who loves his swamp, and then it turns into the story of an ogre who learns to love a, a woman. I Shrek. Shrek 2. Shrek and Shrek 2 are my Shrek favorite rom-coms. And I'm sure there's a lot that sort of meet the... that aren't typically called rom-coms... But maybe because they call it rom-com, they mean the more, you know, what is generically associated with that title. Because if we think of all the animated movies and like Pixar, Disney stuff, where it is a love story and it's also they're trying to be funny. So. Yeah, all right. Uh, question two, what is everyone? Oh, wait, that was question three. I grab both the plushies. Uh, thumbs up. Also, thanks for all the videos, guys. The minis are just great. Thanks for all the hours of fun. Aw, well, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Glad you're watching them and enjoying them. Congrats, Fringy. Of course. Solid 232. Not bad at all. Um, maybe a fab where you only talk to chat, not topic? That's, that, that, that's an idea. That is an idea. That, that's, actually a, that's actually a damn good idea. We could just ask chat, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> and just get a back and forth going. Yeah, what's been on your mind? We can just... Freebie questions. Maybe we'll yeah, make episode two hundred one that? that. Nice and chill. Yeah, we're winding down. Something nice and chill. We don't have to prep ourselves to watch anything. 
That that would be probably a good episode 201. Yeah. Nice and chill. Uh check out your name. I want to say an anime? Is it? Not sure. Where's it go? I remember Adam mentioned you, you it. You say your name? Yeah, it's called your name. Sort of a strange name. It's a 2016 animated romantic fantasy film. Well, maybe we'll check that out at some point. Uh, will Deadpool 3 be able to survive the MCU? No. Next question. I guess. Nothing but of course, I don't... Yeah, I'm not confident that really anything can survive it. Uh, you know, No Way Home, like, squeaked through. Uh, that that was, and I still think that's just luck more than a lot of things that um it didn't manage to get too destroyed. Uh, but like Deadpool and Daredevil, imagine Ghost Rider guys. Ghost Rider. Every time I'm about to say that would be cool, I remember. Yeah. Oh no, stay far away. Dude, Ghost Rider is like he was one of the ones where I when I was first like finding out about the different Marvel comic heroes and stuff, I was like. Fuck me, that's so cool. Like the devil servant. Leather jackets, fucking... fiery skull, having. I meant more so what he does. His whipping. look is also very cool. <laughs> but just the whole like the pen and stare. Like he'll he'll just judge people and their souls will be condemned to hell if they're like the the, the thing is that you have to revamp the world building of the MCU quite a bit <laughs> if you introduce No you Ghost don't Rider. fuck it. You don't even it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Fuck it, yeah. It doesn't it's funny, matter right? how like, many it just Amit Once you get to, to the like, second afterlife, does it matter? Amit is about to eat your soul, whatever, for being evil, but then Ghost Rider sends it to hell or whatever first, and it's just like, wait, what? <laughs> like, I don't know what's, what's happening. What, can he send your soul to heaven? I, I guess so. Like, oh, you're good. Which one? You, you which go one to, you, you go to heaven. Remember, fucking, uh, oh, what's her name? Mighty Thor, you go to Lady a... Jane, whatever. She's in Valhalla now, apparently. If... <laughs> you go to a lobby where they have just, like, this big wheel. <laughs> you just spin it. Fucking, I don't know. Or if they were like, okay, you have conflicting papers here. You died uh, in battle. You're welcome to Valhalla, but you're also Catholic. <laughs> so which would you prefer? You've got to choose one, honey. The receptionist for Egyptian heaven is like, yeah, we haven't had anyone go in here in like 10,000 years. <laughs> or you could just die. You don't go nowhere. It's a shame. It's a really nice one, too, but no, oh, will. You guys like Simpsons, so have you heard Dark Dankmas' Simpsons remixes? They're legit bangers. Unsexy thoughts especially. Worth a listen even on stream. Sounds familiar to me. I think I've uh, checked out some. Excited for 200. Keep up the content, lads. It's on the way. Plenty of stuff to discuss. Does third-party material need to adhere to main canon to be good, or can it see, be seen separately in the same way main canon cannot rely on third-party? Um, at that point, is, how are we defining third party at that point? If it were, because th relying... Fan fiction? If, um, you know, like, we've got the main Star Wars stuff, right? And then someone's making, um, The Adventures of Jar Jar Binks, and it's official, and it's canon, but it is a th third party bit, it doesn't, it's not the film. Um, then yeah, I'd say it has to adhere to canon, but if you were adapting, and you were like, I'm gonna do Jar Jar in the prequels as a TV show... But it's not going to be connected to the films at all. It's going to be a new continuity, but taking the characters because I really like them or something like that. Um, then, yeah, you wouldn't need to. But that's, it was never the point that um, you can't use third party to justify story beats to understand the story. That's not meant to mean that they're separated. It's meant to mean that uh, you have to involve the information to give the viewers the understanding of the stakes within the story itself. You can't just not have them because some other thing somewhere gave you it. Uh, I mean, if a topical example would just be the the one division one where they didn't tell people where the prophecy came from in MOM. I think that was a mistake because someone out there will be like, "Well, if you watch Thingy, you'll be fine." And it's like, "Yeah, but that's not this, is it?" And um, I think that's applicable for a lot of things. Some stuff can be inferred, but uh, uh, you need you can't just let like huge things just go. Don't worry, it's in this book that you can read. So yeah, I would say it should yeah, adhere. You can't just it's... tweet it and think that that fixes your story. No. Uh, but yeah, if it's if it's canon, I'd say it's got to adhere to 
Because the whole idea is you're using um, the canon to make meaningful stories already, so it's like you should be adhering to it then. You can't just pick and choose, you know? But you can pick and choose with an adaptation, for the most part. Uh, I, I guess I mean, when it comes to deciding what, what will determine how good it is, just you need to be fucking careful. We've said it a million times over. If you don't understand why things were written in certain ways, then you might end up contradicting without even realizing. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba. Hey, Mola. Just wondering, why is Robot Head never part of FNT or whatever? He seems to be up there with you guys. I don't know. I um, I don't know if... I, I have no idea who's been on FNT or isn't. I don't... Um, I mean, shockingly, I am not the person who decides who guests on FNT. In fact, I haven't guessed on there in a while. Neither is Rags. Bringy. No! Maybe they... Uh, maybe there's a, there's a blacklist for uh, robots and shadow people. I don't know. I doubt it, though. I think I'm actually going on there next month, I think. I'm not sure. I have to check, <laughs> I have to check what I've agreed to. Um, we are here if we are requested. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, you know, I don't know why or why not people... Uh, I've, I've mentioned before, I think it would be fair to infer that there, there may be something going on with why Rikito hasn't been on EFAB like ever, but I'm still trying to grab him up at some point. There's different people to try and grab on at different times. It just sometimes it ends up being too complex. Like, there'll be people who don't turn up on the anniversary stream. By the way, I found out today, unfortunately, uh, Jay is too busy to be able to come on in any part of the anniversary. Yeah, unfortunate. Um, but hey, it happens. Uh, and it's going to be the same for a couple people. People might not be able to make it, or people will be there for much longer than you may expect, because it's very chaotic, but you know, we try and make everything work. We do the best we can. That and the well, other kind of podcast that can fill twenty four hours easy. Yes, um, I'm pretty sure the first eight will be filled very quick. We'll be like, oh shit, that's it. We gotta go. We gotta do a break. You know. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh card of the day is that which feeds on life. All the cards go. That which feeds on life. This is going to be a pleasant card, isn't it? All right. Let me give you the picture here. It is a bad card. It's a four star, 1200 attack, 1000 defense, normal monster. It's a. The, the, the flavor text is a monster. That feeds on the energy of other creatures. Is and that... its picture here seems to be a, an, a, a headless or invisible headed. Or maybe that thing is its head, the little red thing up top. And also it has a... What the fuck's going on here? Yeah, it looks like its arm is He's a dragon fire. It's got like a flaming fire. dragon arm. Yeah, but... Yeah, it's like, a, it's like a flame that looks like a dragon's head. And it's coming out of its left arm. And the right arm is just like a typical One... skinny goblin arm. Yeah. And he has no head, but he has this little floating sphere that sort of has a face on it. And that might be the head, but it might also just coincidentally be, be up there that the hand is throwing. Yeah, it kind of looks like the hand is telekinetically wobbling it. I was going to say, by the way, the flavor text, a monster that feeds on energy of other creatures, you'd expect it to have some kind of special thing, right? Not just, it's just a creature that has attack and defense, right? That's all it is. Well, if you call it that which feeds on life, you expect something grandiose and well, Lovecraftian yeah, like it, it, it or draws, like some super crazy thing. You'd think it would have a, an effect, some kind of thing. Like when you put it down, it does this. Not that which feeds on life, it's just a thing that has attack and defense. It's like, oh, okay. And it, 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 it yeah, it, it just feels disjointed like a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. Like it's just doing its own thing. Like they just picked a random thing they found and just slapped it on it and yeah. then used an AI to generate a name for it. And it doesn't seem to fit within the rest of the series. Doesn't, what? That's not very impressive though, to <laughs> feed on life. Because that's like what we do. I was about to say, we, doesn't that describe we feed, every we living feed, thing? Yeah, a monster that feeds on the energy of other creatures. That's like it's literally any meat eating creature. I mean, there's a lot of just. Could it, could it be argued that that's a lot of life in general? It's like it all. It's all big. It's what what Mufasa said. <laughs> we we all feed on every. It's a big old cycle. I don't know. It's it's like they're trying to go for like oh it's demonic and it's like eh, it's kind of normal actually. Um. Uh... Just got a survey for this video. 10 out of 10 would recommend again. 
Have you seen those when they get, when they ask for like, what did you think of this video? And one of the offers are like life changing. Like a stream I, about I, people I, talking about She Hulk, and it's like life changing. <laughs> Life changing, but that's it. We're caught yeah, up with super chat. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I guess, uh, yeah, the, the point of the stream was to let people know about the plushies, which both have been funded already. So, thank you immensely for that, ladies. Yeah, and that's that's really awesome. Um, and of course, to let you know about the video, I wanted it out Friday. It could, there's still one more chance, there's one more upload that'll happen as soon as I'm done here. I'm gonna do that. And if that one works, it goes out. If it doesn't, then it'll probably be. Several days after that, but uh, hey, yeah, no, it's all right. Um, so yeah, just want to let you guys know about that, the plushies, and of course, um, we'll see you on Saturday for the anniversary stream, of which I still need to do a bit of setting up. Other than that, thank you all so very much for the kind donations, the messages, the company, and for obviously supporting these these plushies, which Rags will be joining soon enough. Yep, it is on its way, almost here. Hells yeah. Um, but alrighty, is there anything you want to say, Rags, before we head out? Hmm. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Well then. All we have to say is, good night, everybody. Thank you for watching, and we shall see you Saturday. Mwah. Goodbye, everybody. We'll see you then. Boy, boy. Almost there. How exciting. <laughs>